Good morning, Raptor Freaks. Lexi Ots here. It is Friday morning, and the Raptors are playing the Oklahoma City Thunder tonight in Toronto at Scotiabank Arena. Oklahoma City Thunder, a top East uh, Western Conference team that features the maybe the best and greatest uh, Canadian basketball player alive today, Shea Gilgis Alexander. In some ways, the joy of tonight is to see the excellence of great Canadian players like Gilgis Alexander's and Lou Getz Dort on the other team. Also, get to see young players on their team like uh, Shet Holmgren, Jalen Williams. People like that. So let's get right into the preview for tonight's matchup, the Raptors versus the Thunder. Yeah, let's see what's up. All right, we'll start with the injuries. Oklahoma City is uh, what like quite a few teams we played recently. They are injury-free. There is nobody listed on their injuries this morning. They are absolutely healthy, which is fantastic for this time of the year, trying to make a playoff push. They're at 48 and 20. Uh, you know, there's a saying that Phil Jackson used to say, that uh, elite teams win 40 games before they lose 20. And uh, obviously the Celtics are that. They've almost won 60 games without losing 20. They've only got 14 losses. But the, the Thunder uh, apply to this category also, a uh, team that has won 40 games before they lost 20. Now they've lost 20 now, but geez louise, these guys have been good this year. All right, so their lineup looks as such. SGA starting point guard, Josh Giddy of Australia. At the shooting guard, Lugetz Dort is the small forward. Jalen Williams with uh, no Y is the starting power forward. And then uh, Chet Holmgren, Slenderman, at center. Off their bench, the rookie, Kaysen Wallace, who was one of my top five picks for the Raptors to pick last draft, uh, playing for the Thunder as kind of the sixth man. Uh, Isaiah Joe, Aaron Wiggins, Gordon Hayward has been traded to the Thunder and is a, a part of their nucleus. Somebody in their rotation, the opt-injured Gordon Hayward, is finding a new life and a new success coming from the Hornets to the Thunder and, and actually going to be in the playoffs this year. Uh, Jalen Williams with a Y off the bench. Mike Mascala was picked up at some point also to add even more veteran kind of off the bench, uh, three-point shooting big man Kenrick Williams is on this team also. Uh, Adam Flagler, Lindy Waters the third, Usman Dang, Bismack Biombo. Yeah, Bismack will be in the house tonight. It'll be nice to see him. Uh, and then we've got uh, Oliver Saar. I don't know if he's – is he related to Alex Saar, Oliver Saar? I'll bet you he is. I'll bet you he is. Let me look at him real quick or a second on his profile. He is – Played from for Kentucky, Oliver Saar. I don't know. Maybe he is these these Saar guys coming out. But yeah, that's the Thunder team. They've done very well uh, this year. Very very well. Their current uh, kind of trend with their 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 games right now. They've won six out of their last seven. How about that? They've they've only lost once uh, in uh, uh, the last week or so, and it was against the Pacers and Siakam. But they have won six out of their last seven, other than losing the Pacers last Tuesday. So, yeah, this is a good team, uh, the, 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 the Thunder, you know, so they, they're not to be taken lightly. And honestly, when we're doing our score predictions today, you guys, we're going to have to be realistic because they have a lot of offensive firepower. And I don't know how we're going to do as far as scoring for ourselves. The injuries for the Raptors are numerous still. And, uh, yeah, the starters are all still out, it looks like. Of course, Scotty Barnes, fractured third metacarpal bone on his left hand, his surgery in a cast. Yaka Pirtle. Surgery to repair a torn ligament in his pinky on his left hand. He is out, uh, well, of course, both of them in casts. Chris Boucher has a, a partial MCL tear in his right knee, and uh, he's needing testing. More and more testing is what they're saying. No surgery yet. Uh, R.J. Barrett, of course, his, his younger brother passed away recently, and there's no timetable for him to come back from bereavement. And uh, honestly, you know, do what you got to do, R.J. It'd be nice. It would have been nice to see you out there with SGA. And Lou Dort and Kelly out there, Team Canada reuni reunited in the matchup of tonight. But alas, there's some things that are just more important, and some things just need to be dealt with first. And uh, yeah, RJ has a very, very excused absence for sure. Uh, DJ Carton is still out because of his twisted ankle. Man, I feel bad for this young guy because he he would be starting point guard tonight if he wasn't hurt. TJ Carton, it's just too bad that the timing of his injury it sucks. And then uh, also, Emmanuel Quickly, it was said that he may be out uh, uh, indefinitely, is what people are saying about Quickly. It's a personal reason, similar to 
uh, R.J. Barrett. I don't know if it's the same personal reason, R.J. Barrett's reason, or if it's uh, – it, I think they were saying it's something to do with somebody in his family is going through something all of a sudden. And that quickly wanted time away to go be there for his family right now. So uh, RJ, uh, Emmanuel's not hurt, but he is away for personal reasons, much like R.J. right now. And hopefully it's good, not not bad, horrible things that are happening. I want our, our our former New York Knicks, new Raptors, to to be happy and have good things happening for them. So I don't like that. All right, let's see who's left over then for the Raptors with all these guys out. Of course, we had saw Bruce Brown start at point guard last time uh, in the game uh, on uh, uh, against the Kings on Wednesday. Uh, so it's probably likely that'll happen again. So uh, our projected starting lineup for the Raptors tonight, Bruce Brown Jr., Gary Trent Jr., Grady Dick, Oshai Abaji, and Kelly Olenek. Uh, that means off our bench, we got Jamias Ramsey, Jordan Wara, Jonte Porter, hopefully. Hopefully he's gotten well. He's not ill anymore. That'd be good. Javon Freeman, Liberty, Jalen McDaniels, Mo G. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We don't have a whole lot <laughs> of a bench right now. It is what it is. As, as Darko said the other day, we got guys taking on roles they're not ready for, and they're just not totally right for them. They're playing out of their roles and more responsibilities than they should probably get like, when we're at full strength and we're doing really well. Of course, the Raptors have lost eight games in a row. This is one of the longest win losing streaks we've had in, like, 15 years, guys. So it's a really weird time, definitely, to be a Raptors fan. And we're not used to get catching so many L's like this. In some ways, even some of these tough teams we played recently, we would have caught a win against one of them somehow, some way, scrappy, some somehow, some way. But no, nah, it's not going to happen. And in some ways, that's in our favor since we got a 40% chance as of this morning to keep on our, our protected pick. Yeah. So, all right, let's go move on to the next part of what I do. And it is the ref report. Uh, the referees for tonight's game, not a horrible crew. Uh, we've got some of our favorites, but you know, this year has been really bad with the favorites. All of our favorite refs have been going down in win percentage because we've been that bad, you know, and some of these guys, like what I'm going to tell you in just a sec, is going to be crazy. Uh, James Capers Jr. is the crew chief for today's game, 29th season out of Chicago, Illinois. Uh, his favorite TV show is Blackish. He likes the movie Malcolm X. He listens to Jill Scott. His favorite book is The Shack. He likes to eat lobster rolls on Martha's Vineyard. His favorite app is Listen to the Tunes on Pandora. He'd like to attend an English Premier League soccer match. And his hidden talent is Bidwist. Wait a second. So your hidden talent is playing Bidwist, James Capers? You want to play cards with people as a talent on stage? That's not really good TV. This is not like celebrity poker in Las Vegas with with uh, uh, Jennifer Tilly or anything like this. Come on now, guy. What, you want to play cards at the talent show? We can't do that. That's not good TV. If you could find another guy that likes bid whist in the, uh, in the referees, you could maybe play a bid whist at uh, uh, the talent show. But otherwise, if you're the only one, you ain't playing solitaire, my guy. Sorry, we ain't going to watch you play solitaire, my dude. Yeah, no, nah, James Capers is the worst ref today for the Raptors. He is the one that is uh, suspicious, and he's the one in charge. James Capers, we've lost two games straight uh, with him refereeing the last two times he showed up. We did win the first game he repped this year, though. So our record this season is 1-2 and two with James. Uh, our historical record uh, throughout our history in the NBA with him refereeing is 44% winning percentage. And meanwhile, the Thunder win 58% of their games. So 44-58 to 58 for the Thunder. With crew chief James Capers, that's not that's not surprising. That really isn't. Uh, James Capers has not been a nice ref to us. The second ref is though. Second ref is one of my favorites. The second ref may be the best ref in the NBA right now today. Uh, Tyler Ford, number thirty nine, his ninth season out of Lima, Ohio. Uh, his favorite TV show is Yellowstone. He likes the movie Remember the Titans. His favorite music is Old Dominion. Uh, so he could probably talk to Bruce Brown about some stuff. Digging that Old Dominion. Uh, favorite book, The positive, Power of a Positive Team. Uh, his favorite meal is steak, so we need to get a steak for this guy. Uh, favorite app, Netflix. He'd most like to visit Ireland, and his bucket list is to play golf at Augusta National. Ty T Tyler Ford is a young, scrappy referee that don't take no mess, and in some ways I really do respect that. He will be very fair, even if it's not popular, and that's the thing I like about Tyler. 
He is a top five ref for the Raptors all time as far as how he does things, but not this year. No, 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 not this year. Unfortunately, Tyler's been put in a lot of games where the Raptors were overmatched and lost. This They have lost four games this season. He, we are 0-4 with Tyler Ford at Raptors games this particular season. And that's sad because, honestly, we would win way more games than we lose with Tyler Ford in the, in the past. We do have a 61% winning percentage with him career-wise throughout his referee career, but it's plummeted. It was much higher at the beginning of the year with these four losses this season. Well, they're going to add a fifth one. Today is going to be 0-5, Tyler Ford, by the end of the day. I'm going to tell you that right now. I know that Darko's setting up our team to get ready for the game to try and win and stuff, but come on, let's be realistic. Uh, the, the Thunder, their winning percentage with him is 39%. So we actually are favored by Tyler Ford historically. 61 to 39 for the Raptors with the second ref, Tyler Ford. The third ref is the green Evan Scott, uh, Nick Nurse's favorite ref, Prince lover Evan Scott, his fifth season out of South Korea. His favorite TV show is Sports Center. He likes the movie Inception. He listens to Prince. Uh, his favorite book is Stalling for Time. He'll eat steak and asparagus. We can get a couple steaks for uh, Tyler and Evan, these two guys. His favorite app is FaceTime, and he most like to visit the Amalfi Coast. Yeah, I saw some pictures of the Amalfi Coast re recently, uh, Evan Scott, and that place is picturesque. I get why you want to go there, Evan Scott. That place is awesome. No lie. Evan Scott is a younger ref, but he's been good to us in the past. Uh, we have lost three straight games with him this season, though. We are re our record is one and three this season with Evan Scott present at games. Uh, we win 53% of our games career-wise in his career. And meanwhile, wow. The Oklahoma City Thunder only win 13% uh, of their game. So really, really low split for the Thunder. Uh, uh, Evan Scott's not very nice to the Thunder. Let's just put it that way. Uh, so 53 to 13 is the, the split between uh, Evan Scott with the teams favoring the Raptors. 53 to 13. Now, these splits don't mean jack shit. If we're in tank mode, we're trying to lose. And uh, the, 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 the Thunder's trying to win. Yeah, these splits don't mean shit. They, they, they're, they're gonna, we're probably going to get our ass beat tonight. Pretty bad. Pretty, pretty bad. It's a talent matchup. And well, they got the talent. They got the talent. And that's for damn sure. All right, there you go. There's your setup, ref report, and injury news right there. Let's get into the comments with my, my people, the RFF, the Raptor Freak family. I love you guys. Hope you guys are having a great morning so far. That's a little dreary here in Toronto this morning, looking out the window. Uh, Mo in first. All right, super fan Mo. Uh, good morning, RFF. Please show a better effort, win or lose. Go Raptors. I agree with this completely and wholeheartedly. I've been very happy with y'all's effort during this losing streak, except for the last game. I think that the, this is the same with Darko. He said it after the game. He said, I've been very happy with the effort in most of these losses, but not last night, last game. Not last game. No, no, not happy with the effort in the last game for sure. So no periods of time like that. In fact, you know, listen, Moji, you may need to get a DMP tonight. Yeah, just a little lesson in some ways. And maybe Garrett Temple may need to take your minutes today instead. You know, maybe a little bit more minutes for other people in certain ways. I don't know. We'll have to see how Coach Darko doles out the minutes and see if he has any kind of reaction to the more unprofessional play from players on Wednesday against the Kings and how he puts them out there in the rotation tonight. We'll have to see. Yeah, second half was brutal last game. No lie. No lies from uh, the super fan Monique Lawrence. No lies in any kind of way right there. Truth coming from her voice right there. Yeah, Cowboys in next. Good morning, Lex and Raptor Freaks. This game is going to be interesting, and he's got his point total already. He's ready to play the game. Score prediction. I got my pad and pen paper. Let's do the OKC at Toronto uh, score prediction game. We're going to put in Cowboy now. Then I feel like a bookie. Here we go. Cowboy, number one on the list. He's going to put in that he was going to say 130 for OKC to uh, 97 for the Raptors. Okay, that's his official score prediction. Wow, Cowboy. Wow. I mean, that sounds like a pretty uh, – wait, 130 – wait, I looked at Trevor's. 138, he said. 138. To 101 is what he's saying. Okay, 138 to 101 for the Thunder is what Cowboy's saying. And I see Trevor Jay's down there. That's the one I read earlier because I saw the wrong one. So I'll put Trevor Jay down to 130 to 97. That's Trevor Jay's. You know what? I'll, I'll put mine down now too, just real quick. All right, I'm going to think about this. I think y'all got it right about right. Um, I do want to get to 100 today. 
but I don't know how their defense is. Like it could be very well not going to be nice to us. So I'm going to go, you know, I'm going to go really crazy. And I'm going to say that Oklahoma City Thunder are going to score 140 points on us. No, wait, that may be too crazy. That may be too crazy. You guys are seeming like pretty right. Ah, that may be too much. No, because they got SGA. I don't know. In some ways, they could run it up on us. I want to say 140 to 105. 140 to, 140 to 105 is going to be my prediction. All right? That'll be my prediction. 140 to 105 for the OKC Thunder. Yeah, let's see. Um, uh, Nako's here. Good to see Gerald. OKC is a fun team. They're kind of entertaining. They're kind of endearing. Endearing. <laughs> oh, you want to go, like, uh, you know, uh, hang out with them. I don't know what they're enduring. Deering. Eh, okay. That, I guess I see that word. I like some of them a lot. Obviously, I like our Canada guys. I'm I'm a hater of Holmgren in all kinds of different ways. All kinds of different ways. I'm a hater of Holmgren. In some ways, if he's going to be the antithesis of Wemba Yama, I'm Team Wemby. And uh, yeah, and Chad Holmgren, I mean, I should respect him more, but I don't. I really don't. I've been a hater since he showed up, and I'm going to continue to do that. But I do like the Thunder overall as a team. I'm, I'm a fan of Josh Giddey's. I think Josh Giddey's a fantastic player. I like most of their players. It's just I don't like Chet. For some reason, I just don't like him. Uh, let's see. Trevor's saying, good morning, Raptors family. Okay, see, I don't know about this game. Let's see how we do. He says 130 to uh, 97. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably about right. And since Trevor Jay's here, let's do the Cosmic Card of the Day. I've got the box right here. And uh, first person, the right end, the full name of the person on the card, by the time this goes up, uh, we'll get the, the 100 points. So let's see what the Cosmic Card of the Day, sponsored by Commissioner J, uh, uh, Commissioner Fun, Trevor J. I love it. All right, let's see. I need a drum roll, please. All right, let me look at it. Let me see how I should approach showing the card to you guys. Man, this is ridiculous. This is absolutely ridiculous. I don't think you guys will get it. In some ways, I might pull a new card because this is absolutely, this is worse than John Crotty, guys. I'm going to say that right now. All right, I'm going to show it this way because I think this is a better picture, the back picture. If anybody gets this, I'm going to be super impressed. All right, who is that, guys? Who is that? That's a sixer, obviously. Now, he doesn't look that familiar. If y'all know who this is, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. Yeah. All right. What? Anybody have a guess? If nobody even wants to try, then we'll just kind of move on. Uh, so nobody's guessing right now. Y'all are writing your scores right now. <laughs> Come on. Does anybody know who that classic card of the day is? This one today. This is so hard. In some ways, it's like if you're a Sixers freak, maybe you know who this is. But, it, you know, no, it's not Clarence Witherspoon. I'm going to give you guys three guesses. And if you guys don't get it, I'm just going to give up on this one. If Tre Trevor J gives me the rights, I'll I'll draw another one. Um, you guys want me to give you one? I'll give you a clue. All right. Alvin Jones? No, Jill, that's not right. All right. How should I say this? I could try and give you clues like I do for my other trivia that I do. Okay. Um, hmm. All right. This re this basketball player has the same last name as country singer who sings Constant Craving. If you know the singer who sings the song Constant Craving, then you will know the last name of this player. If you know the singer that sings the song Constant Craving, uh, then you will know the last name of this player, and then you can go from that. So Trevor J. Sand doing uh do another one. Oh, Fiercey got it. Holy shit. Fiercey got it straight up. She got it. I just saw it. Andrew Lang. That is right. Fiercey got it. This is an advanced one. So you're getting 200 points today, Fiercey. That is Andrew Lang. She might have looked up like, uh, I don't know how you got it, Fiercey. You may need to tell us. Yes, Katie Lang is constant craving. And Andrew Lang is the player. So Fiercey got it. I don't even know how you got that, Fiercey. Holy shit, Fiercey. Pulling a smooth brown man move right there and getting getting a uh, Andrew Lang. How did you do that, Fiercy? Are you just like an Andrew Lang fan? Trevor, I don't think we need to do another card because Fiercy got it. And yeah, was that a pretty good clue? Constant craving. <laughs> Constant craving. <laughs> 
All right, Piercy, good job. Wow, you guys are really impressing me this week with the kind of stuff you guys know. Oh, my gosh. All right, uh, super fan Monique Lawrence is saying that Dylan Brooks and DeMar fight has gone viral. Yeah, there were a couple of fracases last night involving former Raptors. Of course, I have my uh, loyalties to people involved in these fracases. I'm not biased. I mean, I'm very biased in this. I can't be unbiased in this. We'll start with that one. Because that one's the more marquee one, the one that happened. And we actually, I have uh, rooting interests on both sides of that little conflict. Except I'm going to stand with DeMar every time because he's a groat. Because DeMar is my guy. And I know DeMar real, real well from his many years here being on the Raptors and watching dinners with DeMar and listening to DeMar speak. You know, he's really in a good place with his mental health. Well, why did he throw Jalen Green to the ground like that? Then? Why did he do that? Why would you do that, DeMar? That dirty play. Well, there could be a multiple reasons why DeMar DeRozan threw Jalen Ground to the to the floor in a dirty way uh, last night. It could be. It could be shit talking. Sure. It could be shit talking. Maybe he said something that was just totally out of pocket. You know, DeMar's got a lot of tragedy in his life. What if Jalen Green said something that was very insensitive about maybe the passing of his father? Maybe he said something stupid about his daughter screaming at us last play in. Maybe he said something just out of pocket. You know, he says something out of pocket and DeMar's mad at him. It's probably justified. I'm going to say that right now. Just like with Draymond and Jordan Poole, I'm going to pick the old head side. DeMar DeRozan has a track record in this league of not doing uh, things like what he did to Jalen Green last night. So it's obvious Jalen Green did something to him or said something to him. That's the thing. They're not going to show the, the thing that was said or the thirst thing. It's just like in hockey. The instigator usually doesn't get picked up on camera. It's the re reaction that gets caught and gets in trouble. And that's what this is. There's something that Jalen Green did to DeMar. He would not do this just out of the blue. And he put him on the floor for a message. He said, no, nah, they ain't going to stick. It's, you know, there's some old school NBA still in this league where they'll put you on your butt if you're out of pocket with how you're acting. And, well, I don't blame Dylan Brooks for coming at him like that because that's what he's supposed to do for the Rockets as the bulldog on that team, the enforcer. It's really kind of hilarious to see those guys jawing at each other you know, the, the, the DeMar saying, get the fuck out of my face. <laughs> you can see him saying it on the camera in the replay when Dylan Brooks came at him. And he actually did kind of hit Dylan with an elbow, too, in the whole little fracas there. Listen, I'm going to stand by DeRozan. I don't care what, what happened, what he did. He's not wrong. He, if he wanted to put Jalen Green on the floor and his longevity in the NBA and what he's done and the citizen he is, he probably has a good reason for it. Hey, Houston fans, you can get mad at DeMar DeRozan. You can be like, oh, Lex, you're standing up for the dirty player. I'm like, I don't know what he said to him. I don't know what he said to him. I don't know what he did because they're not showing that part of it. The, the stuff that happened before DeMar put him on the floor. So I stand with my guy from Compton, Compton Zone, DeMar DeRozan. I love you, Dylan. But listen, I know you have to do what you have to do. But this whole thing started because of Jalen Green. So fuck him is what I say. Even Fred getting involved in the fracas a little bit, fighting with one of the Bulls trainers in the whole, like, pile up. Because somebody was grabbing his leg. He was like, who's grabbing my leg? Fred's like, kicking him. Kick Get off my leg. Who the fuck are you? <laughs> what a crazy little fr fight. And that wasn't the only one last night. There's another one we got to talk about, too. But, yeah, we'll talk about this one, too. That's my breakdown of it. I'll just say this. I DeMar DeRozan's a good guy. He's gone through so much. And he has a really good control of himself. But... I bet Jalen Green was out of pocket. Yeah, I'll bet you money he was. I don't. I will never know probably what he said to him. But if he said anything about his family, oh, he deserves to go to the floor. He deserves to go to the floor is what I'll say right now. Yeah, yeah. They both got ejected, and the Rockets ended up winning the game. Still, yeah. Trevor's saying uh, because uh, DeMar, uh, DeMar and Brooks get both get ejected because of DeMar's cheap shot on Jalen Green, and Brooks got involved. Yeah. It may have been cheap, and it was. It was a little message. This is Charles Oakley saying, hello, young rook. It's time for you to get your lick because you're new in the league. It never used to be a dirty play. It used to be a welcome to the NBA lick. And I don't understand. Like, I won't say that it's dirty. Some people may say it's dirty. Sure, it was a, it was a flagrant foul. He got punished for it. But I don't care. That's just how it is. This league is like that. And it's not like you really hurt him. He went to the ground. He, he, he milked it. Jalen Green, punk ass. So, yeah, I'm going to stand with DeMar. I'll spin this on his side every which way. Because <laughs> I love DeMar. DeMar is one of the greatest rappers of all time. His number 10 will be in our uh, arena at some point. Retired. Watch. So, yeah, I, I'm going to stand with him for sure. For sure. Let's see. 
uh, uh, Nako is confirming that Oliver Sar and Alex Sar are related. Okay, so we'll see. Uh, I don't know if he's the cousin or the brother of Alex Sar on the Thunder tonight. Oliver Sar playing for the Thunder. Very good information. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, Chris is saying, I can't remember any teams that basically have all the starters out. Stay strong, Raptor fans. This is about as bad as it gets. Can't get worse. Or say that, Chris. I'm not about saying things like that because, you know, you can fucking make it worse. Seriously. <laughs> it can be worse. Trust me. There's levels. Uh, I, I, I Listen, we're going to just try and get good luck and good things happening for us as far as health and things for next season. This year's a wash. Who cares? In some ways, losing is our friend. And, uh, you know, that's the, that's the thing to stay strong on, Raptors fans, is losing is winning right now. So just remember that. And it can always get worse, Chris. Don't act like it can. <laughs> uh, Fiercy is here. It's good to see Fiercy saw Sarah. Marie, always good to see you. Uh, good morning, fam. Happy Friday. I agree, Lex. No longer feeling the score prediction is as it's kind of jinxing the team. I'm hoping despite our situation, opportunities for growth, let's make the most of it. Yeah, we I want I'm not I'm not a you know, I don't know. Do you think really feel like this is a bad thing for us to do? Because if you want, I'll ban it. I'll ban it. If you don't want to do it for the rest of the season, I feel like it's okay to do right now when the outcome is doesn't matter to us. In some ways, a win would be nice. In some ways, us not predicting for them to win. I get it. You wanted to predict them to win last time, and you were absolutely the worst in the pick predictions. Uh, I mean, I get it. In some ways, this is good to debate about. And you know what? I'm leaning towards what you're saying, but I feel like we could try and have this fun at least for just a little bit right now. We will definitely not be doing this after this season ends. We won't be doing it in summer league. We will not be doing it in the preseason, and we will not be doing it next regular season for sure. That Only in very severe cases like where we are right now will I allow the score prediction game to happen on this channel. But yeah, if you, you're not comfortable participating, Fiercy, I'm with you. I'm with you on it in some ways. I don't know. I don't want to say that that jinx word is anything to do with what we're doing. I think that they need to lose, and that's just how it is. Evelyn's here. Good to see Granny Swag. I love Evelyn so much. This has been She's been an MVP this week. You know, just so awesome. Her gift for Darko, her just her, her kind energy at the Rabbit Freak meet and greet. Just so awesome, Evelyn. I, I really do feel privileged when I get to be in your presence like I did on Tuesday. And uh, I love you so much. I hope that the babies are doing really good and everything is great in your world with Prince, Prince Toussaint and everybody else around you. Good morning, Raptor Freak family. Believe and trust and keep the faith. Let's go, Raps. There you go. Granny Evelyn being a, a true one, a real one for the Raptors and keeping the, the, the light of support alive for the, her team. And that's right. She's a real one. Uh, Fiercely saying, sending love and light to RJ and IQ and their personal issues. Also, I rewatched Dennis DeMar's move. I was surprised. I guess he was extremely frustrated out of character for him. Now, that is very pointed attack to somebody who did something out of pocket. And DeMar doesn't do jack shit like that. And that's the thing that's so surprising to old heads and people that have been watching the league for a long time. DeMar DeRozan don't take dirty cheap shots. Uh, there's a very good reason for it. That's what I'm saying. He's not going to go do that to someone unless they really needed that receipt. And uh, I, that's why I support him because his track record is real good. His, his track record is real, real good for not being a dirty player and doing all that kind of stuff. There must have been something Jalen Green said. Sometimes these young guys come out and they're cocky and they say sh certain shit. And, well, the old heads are like, you need to respect me. I'm still around this league. And, look, you can look at my career points total, motherfucker. And when you get a little bit like maybe half of it, then you can come talk to me, okay? It's that kind of shit is what I would say. Who knows what he said to him? I'm sure he said something to him or he showed him up or he did something fucked up. To put him on the ground. Seriously. Seriously. I bet you he did. I'll bet you he did. Uh, Nako's saying, it's not like I'm, I'm not invested, but I feel like the season has already ended. Grady's passing still gives me le liege. Grady's passing still gives me liege? Oh, man. You're using such crazy words. Endearing and liege. I love you, Gerald. You're awesome. No, this season's not over. No, we got to finish it, Gerald. You can go into off-season mode already if you want, but I can't. I'm doing this channel every morning. So now this season ain't over yet. It ain't over till it's over. Gary Trent Jr. lookalike singing that song to me. Many tears I've cried. So many losses inside. Oh, baby, it ain't over till it's over. Over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gary Trent Jr. singing that song. I love that song. I see that video and I'm like, Gary, man, you look really good back in the day when you would sing your songs in your music career. Oh, wait, that's Lenny Kravitz? Oh, man, I thought that was Gary Trent. 
okay, that's cool. Jill's here. Good to see Jillian Moody. Good morning to Jill. Uh, uh, Evelyn's saying like, like, and share, guys. Thanks. Thank you, Evelyn. And Cowboy's saying slam dunk that like button. Thank you, Cowboy. Uh, Jill's saying the numbers of peeps in here is more than it said extremely externally before I clicked on. Hmm. I don't know how it works, Jill. It's YouTube bullshit. YouTube logarithms and logarithms and algorithms and bullshit. That's all logistics. I don't give a shit. We just do this. I'm numbers. I don't look into my stats. My stats are crazy. Lots of watch hours and lots of craziness. Yeah, lots of watch hours on my channel. That's for sure. Uh, MSJ saying, what the fuck is with the snow today? I am sick of it. You got snow where you are, Chris? Well, I must be a little bit further south of you because I don't see no snow yet here today. No, we ain't got it in the downtown Toronto yet. But if you're out in the burbs, you got it out in the burbs. Okay, you got it out in the burbs. We're too hot in the city. Hot in the city today <laughs> oh yeah i'm singing a bunch of old songs today all right let's see jill saying slam dunk cowboy slim duck and slam dunk okay you want to give a slam dunk to the cowboy on the dunk list i will do that 37 jamias ramsey number for a canadian cowboy right now 37 dunks this year jamias ramsey that's right let's go miss moody miss moody that's right let's go uh smooth saying another tough watch incoming i don't know let's make the best of it this is the thing. They say keys to victories, keys to watching the game and keeping your sanity. Enjoy SGA. Marvel at his greatness and enjoy it. And think about him doing that for the red and white this summer and Paris Olympics. That'll make the game much more enjoyable for you. If you look at it through the lens of this guy's going to be playing for Team Canada to try and get a gold medal at the Paris Olympics this summer. You can watch him and Lou Getz in this kind of frame. And then you can look at guys like Chet. If you're a Chet stan, you want to look at Chet, watch Chet, and see how Chet plays. Chet, Chet, uh, you know, all the young guys. Maybe some of you like uh, Josh Giddy. Maybe you want to see Josh Giddy's pretty boy looks. Maybe you're a good age for him, a proper age. Maybe you want to scout him for the Paris Olympics since he's going to be in the group with Canada. I bet there's shit talking already going on on the Thunder team. I mean, SGA already knows. In some ways, this isn't fair to Josh Giddy. He's got to play on the team with him for the rest of the season and the playoffs. And Josh and Lou Dort are going to be talking. Tra- they're going to be talking trash. So is SGA. SGA is going to be in there. Yeah, when we play you at the Olympics, Australia, we're going to kick your butt, Josh. I bet you that shit's going on around the team. There's a little bit of shit talking for Paris Olympics on their team already, since the best player for Canada and the best player for Australia, and they're both in the same Group A. That are on the same team. Yeah, but there is some shit talking already going on since they know the draw of the Olympic draw. Yeah, yeah, I bet. It'd be fun. I bet SGA can say all kinds of mad shit to Josh Giddy and get ready for the matchup Australia versus Canada. Group A, Olympics, Paris, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not good saying, I'm not looking forward to driving home. That's what Adriana was saying yesterday on the phone. She's saying, there's going to be some crazy snow today, Lex. Tomorrow, there's going to be a lot of snow. And I'm like, oh, okay, Friday snow. All right, TGIF with the snow. Uh, Jill's saying, I want I want a score. All right, let's see. Jill, what is Jill saying today for the score prediction game for today that may not be played very much for soon? Uh, let's see, 123 to 89 for Shea. Wait, Shea's getting 123? Hmm, how many points will Shea get? Hmm, I don't know. We're not going to do that one. We won't do the, the score. Pre- Maybe we should do this instead. Predict, predict superstar score uh, points. Maybe we'll we'll figure out a game of some sort. Maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe betting culture is infiltrating our channel. Maybe we need to kick it out. <laughs> Fuck this betting culture. We don't need to do this. We don't need to. <laughs> uh, Chris is saying, I hope for a good game out of JFL. That's about it uh, of me. But I also love SGA to the point I want to get him get him to get fifty. Laugh out loud. Sorry. He's just about the best player out there. Jokic, sure, but SGA has style. Honestly, I want him to win MVP. Listen, Raptors, we don't have to win today. We don't want to win. Help that man look good to get MVP. Seriously, let SGA come home and play in front of his family and just kick some ass because I would love to see him beat the NBA most valuable player for the season. Shea Gilgis Alexander, if he's the MVP this year, that's great. He'll be just like Steve Nash. One of the only Canadians to ever win the NBA MVP ever. And that's what we want. That's what we want. We want SGA to win that. So, yeah, I'm all about what Chris is saying here. Sorry, Joker. You are a great player. You may be the best player, but you've won so much. Let's give give one to the Canadian guy this year, MVP SGA. 
Yeah, I like those six letters together. MVP, SGA. That's what I like. Yeah, Nako's got his score total. Let's see what Gerald's saying. Gerald's involved in in, uh, in the contest today. He's saying 118 to 96. Your score is very reasonable and nice for the Raptors. I like that. 118 to 96. I like that. Jill's saying, I think Shea will get 31 points. I might take the over on that, Jill. I seriously do. I think, all right, you're going to say 31. I'm going to take the over on that, Jill. Yeah, we're degenerates now. I'm going to say over 31 points for SGA today. Jill says 31. I'm taking the over. All right, put your money down, Lex. Oh, my gosh, I'm a degenerate. I'm a degenerate. Oh, my gosh, I can't put my money on this. It's stupid. It's not good investing. Uh, let's see. Smooth's got his prediction. Let me write that in. Smooth, Smooth's been really kicking butt. And uh, he did. He got second in the last score prediction. So right behind Seymour. Where's Seymour? He needs to come and give us his prediction because, honestly, he's a – He's the master. So 115 to 90 is Smooth's uh, uh, prediction for the game tonight. Seymour's saying, good guess, Raptor Freaks. Good guess. Good guess. He's going to give us the final score very soon. Watch. Uh, Fiercely saying, I do predict SGA will score over 30 points. Duh. Yeah, I think that's a pretty good bet. I'd say over 31. Uh, Chris is saying, I think you have to get over the Chet hate. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't like him. I don't like his attitude. I don't like the way he carries himself. He is cocky as fuck. Apparently, he's one of the biggest shit talkers on the court. In the young generation, fuck him. No, he has no respect for older people on the court, and he's talking a lot of mad shit. Fuck that guy. Fuck that guy. I don't ever have to like him, Chris. I really don't. He could be really good, and I'll still hate him. I just don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him in any kind of way. I never have, and I won't. I won't. You can say, oh, I'm going to get over my chat. Hey, no, I won't. No, I won't. <laughs> no, I won't. Trust me, I won't. He comes to the Raptors. I might have to. But otherwise, I won't. I will. I really will not ever get around on Chad. I don't care how talented he is. I don't, don't care about his highlights. I don't give a shit about any of that. I'm Team Wemby. And if it's going to be Team Chet and Team Wemby, I'm Team Wemby. That's just how it is. It's just how it is. Yeah, he's great. And he seems to be a decent person. That's not what I've seen. I've seen him talk shit. I've seen him be a little cocky asshole. I, I can tell he's full. Of, he, he talks a lot of shit on the court, Chris. Seriously. He's a disrespectful guy. Uh, he's saying, I think he's a power forward, and I hope uh, OKC gets a center. O -K -O -C -K, o Oklahoma City K. Yeah. Uh, their center is um, uh, is is Bismack. They got B Bismack. They got a couple other guys. I don't know. We'll see. Those are their problems. I don't give a shit about them. <laughs> they could play Jalen Williams at center. It'd be fine. Chet, Chet doesn't have to necessarily play center because uh, they got some guys that kind of got size around them. So uh, let's see. Cowboy thinks 40 plus for SGA tonight. 40 plus. Wow. 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 Yeah. I'm still really shocked that Fiercey got Andrew Lang. That's amazing. Yeah. What school did he go to? Um, oh, man. I'm going to check my eyesight in this bad light. I think he went to Florida. I'm not totally sure. I don't care. I really don't. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, message deleted. No, 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 no. We aren't deleting Trevor J's messages. Do another one, Lex. Nah, we, we won't need to. I appreciate you, though. Um, okay, hang on. It jumped ahead. La, 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 la. Okay, we are on uh, Fiercy, KD Lang, Buddy, Buddy Length. He was a clipper once. Great. Yeah, Fiercy got it. Uh, Seymour saying, since it's Friday, can we do another card, please? <laughs> he wants to do two. Uh, I got to save them because I don't want to run out of them. So like one, one per day is it. So Fiercy's got it. So we're good. Jill saying, Seymour, how many points will Shea get to, tonight? We'll have to see what he says. Fiercy's saying, yeah, unfortunately, I believe Den DeMar was triggered. Unlike Dennis, who's more into confrontations like yesterday with Giannis. All right. She brought up the other one. So we'll talk about this one now. Dennis Schroeder and the Brooklyn Nets playing the Milwaukee Bucks last night. All of a sudden, Giannis is not ducking his opponent when he ducked the Boston Celtics the night before. What a loser. Seriously, you're going to be a duck in the Celtics the game before, and then you show up healthy to play a lowly Brooklyn Nets team. All right, once again, I'm going to stand with my guy. I don't, I'm not on uh, anybody else's side other than Dennis. I'm going to say that right now. Dennis was obviously felt disrespected by somebody. It may have been some shit talk. Now, I'm going to say this. Dennis is a badass. He's the, most, the smallest guy involved in anything that happened with his incident last night. He's so brave. I mean, look. Look at the size difference between him and Giannis. Look at the size difference between him and Jay Crowder. You know, that's very, you know, like brave. 
in some ways to stand up for yourself. And this, this to me comes to me just like him standing up towards his coach in Germany last summer at World Cup. This is me seeing him stand up against Maxi Kleber. This is me seeing Dennis stand up for our guys at times when he was shortly on the Raptors this season. This is just who he is. He's protector and he doesn't take no shit. And if Giannis talks some trash or something like that, you know, he wanted to like intimidate him. And so he did. He hit, he fouled him. Giannis hit the floor and then he stood over him. And that is a little bit of kind of like intimidation kind of messed up. I think that the balls of Dennis Schroeder to do that to Giannis was amazing. In some ways, that's like, that's like, holy shit, you know, you do that to role players, but you're doing that to a franchise player, maybe that one of the top five players in the league. That's badass. In some ways, I got a lot of respect for the balls on Dennis Schroeder for what he did last night. Seriously, he got he was like not even backing down. He stood over him and he stood and he, he did what he did. Sure. And then Giannis was so mad at him, he got up and headbutted him. And it was crazy. But Dennis didn't flinch. Dennis did not back down. And that in some ways, I really respect that. Seriously, because Giannis can be a punk. We know he can be a punk, a little bitch. And well, Dennis told him he was a little bitch. And I stand with him. I stand with him on that. Some people are going to say, oh, Dennis the villain. I hate Dennis. I hate Dennis. No, I look at him as a hero because he was brave enough to stand in there and stand his reality and his 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 point of view in that situation against everybody. And like the announcer said, afterwards, he was still talking. He he did not feel like he was in the wrong in any kind of way, Dennis Schroeder. And he was just standing his ground and standing up for himself. And as the smaller guy involved in all that, I kudos to you, man, Dennis. You're a badass. You're on a shittier team, a losing team, a team that's probably not going to make the playoffs, but you still have pride and you still stand up for yourself. So, I, of course, I'm going to spin it and stand with my guys. Giannis is kind of a clown. Giannis is kind of goofball. And it's kind of funny to see Giannis lose his temper because he doesn't always lose his temper. Sometimes it has to do with a ladder when he loses his temper or a game ball. That will make him lose his temper. But not usually in the game against somebody and fighting like that. No, that was very different in some ways. Because sometimes Giannis is a little casual. Let's just put it that way. So, yeah, I'm standing with Dennis and DeMar. I don't give a shit. I'm a Raptor freak, and I stand with my guys. That's right. That's right. Uh, Cowboy Sam Fiercy, big up to yourself, Sheriff. Big up to yourself, Sheriff. Yeah, yeah. Fiercy saying during the fight, uh, DeSimo casually shooting the ball. He didn't want to be a part of that. Yeah, there, there were all kinds of different people doing different things during uh, d- different stuff. Yeah, some people want to get in there, like Dylan Brooks. Oh, yeah, he want to get in there right away. Yeah, 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 it is what it is. Seymour saying, I don't see him killing us tonight. Out of respect, SGA will notch 30 and hug the bench by half. Yeah, I mean, obviously, he's he loves Kelly. I know that him and Kelly have a good relationship because in some ways, Kelly's a big guy looking out for him this summer. So, you know, the, the love between the Team Canada guys will be evident. But, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to see. It may not be SGA that goes off on us. Maybe there's a different Thunder that has a big night tonight. Maybe it's even a bench guy like Case and Wallace. You know, it could be any of them. It could be any of them. Maybe Chet hears me and he's like, fuck that Raptor Street guy. I'm going to destroy the Raptors tonight. And Chet goes out there and drops a huge number on us. Who knows? We'll have to see. Uh, cool Cat's here. Good morning, Raptor Street crew. Game day. Cool Cat's going to the game. Cool Cat, you're going down the game to be taking your friends who want the experience of a Raptors game. So take them down there and show them a good time and maybe like focus more on the SGA factor of it and just say, yeah, this is our guy for Team Canada. He's going to be playing for us at the Olympics this summer. Check him out. And maybe they'll focus on the greatness of SGA and not so much on the, the hurtness of the Raptors and the poor the, the place we are right now with our team condition at this point. But Cool Cat, have a good time. And I know you're going to go down there and be a, a real one, a real Raptor freak. And you won't be one of those idiots booing them. If anybody's booing the Raptors tonight in Scotiabank Arena and you're a Raptors fan, fuck you, is what I'm going to say to you right now. Yeah, I'll say it ahead of time even. Uh, let's see. Uh, Seymour saying, ta-da. Oh, you want me to do an ad? All right, I'll do an ad real quick. Call for a free quote. Ta-da services, cleaning services. They can come and help you with equipment re- rentals, flooring, handyman, flood restoration, repairs of all kinds. 647-833-6844. And you can call Bradley and he'll come to your house and he can help you with an odd job. Tada services. That's right. Get him on the phone and call him. Yeah. 30 plus. That's right. Cool cat saying Fred Van Vliet's loyalty was torn. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, because honestly, he is really tight with uh, with Damar. And in some ways, he needed to be in there breaking it up because nobody's gonna punch him on either side. Dylan's not gonna punch him, and Damar's not gonna punch Fred. 
So he's a great person to try and break the fight up. Yeah, yeah. His loyalty was a little torn. His mentor was getting pissed off and his mentees that he's leading. What a dilemma. He's trying to keep the peace. Yeah, I don't know if Dylan Brooks is one of his mentees, but Jalen Green is for sure. Fred current, uh, recently said that uh, our team is best when Jalen Green plays really, really well. And when Jalen Green plays really well, we win. And that's what they're doing right now. The Rockets are on a win streak right now. This uh, rivaling the Boston win streak right now. So the Rockets are on fire right now currently. And Fred Van Vliet's a big part of it. I know that. I know that. Yeah. Chris is saying, also, SGA said Chet is a true team player, and he has it in him to be in every play. And Lex, I, it can't get worse. Laugh out loud. No, no, I'll disagree with you on both things. I will never like Chet. And yes, it can get worse. Trust me. There's Detroit and Washington. Go look at them, okay? And tell me, Chris. It can get worse. It can get worse. Oh, yeah, it can get worse. Trust me. It can. Yeah, it can. Yeah. I don't care if he's a team leader for the Thunder. Fuck that. I hate him. I hate the guy. And if he's good for their team, I don't give a shit. He talks shit to the other teams. He's, he's a punk ass. He tries to show people up. He's got a lot of advantages, and he's he's a punk ass. He uses them to talk shit. So, listen, I, I'm going to be on the side. You're going to have to agree to let me to be a Chet hater. You're not going to win me over. And it's just how it is. It's just how it is. Uh, Fiercely saying, don't ban the prediction. It's a way to stay engaged in the games and watch them till the end. We can do this for just for the rest of the season, but it is over. As soon as the Raptors season is over in Miami next month, no more score prediction game on this channel. Only in special cases where it seems like it's necessary. Otherwise, I will not be playing it in the future. It will not be happening at Summer League even. We're going to be in Summer League. You degenerates, I'm not going to do a score prediction on Summer League games for the Raptors this summer, okay? Team Canada, nope, we ain't doing it. No, we ain't. We ain't messing around with nothing we have to do with Team Canada with any kind of predictions. No, we are not. No, we are not. That's right. Uh, Seymour's saying, uh-oh, SpaghettiOs. Now, Seymour, where's your prediction? I need your prediction for the game. Yeah. Uh, Trevor, uh, Seymour's saying, what did Trevor do? It must be a mistake. Yeah, he, she, she hit it by accident. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, let's see. Check mark. Yeah. Uh, fiercely saying, I get Chet is talented. I do. But I, I respect Wemby more as he's a real rookie. I believe Chet could have played despite his preseason injury, but OKC sat him out on purpose the full season. Yeah, it's a little fishy. I mean, like I said, the guy got hurt in an intramural game uh, in the in the summer in a, a pro am, and I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm not feeling real good about his his long term health outcomes with the NBA. I'm sorry. In some ways, I just don't. I just don't feel good about his long term health outcomes in the NBA. I really don't. And I still believe that. I still he may be mostly healthy this year, but and I don't wish anything for anybody. I'm just talking about his body type and the way he is. In some ways, Wemby has strengthened himself with yoga. He's extremely flexible, and in some ways, he's a lot stronger than Chet. I can tell. You know, there's a yeah. These are obvious comparison people: Wemba Yama and Holmgren. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't. I don't give a discount to Chet from missing last season and being a, a rookie this year. I don't do that like you are, but. Uh, I, and I don't know if he could have played last year. I, maybe he could have played for like the last couple months of last year, but what's the point? In some ways, they don't want to rob this guy of his full season. And they just want to start him with the full season this year. So uh, let's see. Carlos here. Good morning, Raptor Freak family. Good morning to you, Carlo JS. Seymour saying, I want to play Kia Nurse. She can post me up any day. Damn. <laughs> okay, yeah, a Canadian women's team and their group. Looking pretty good, too. We'll have to see how they do. I'm, I'm all about Kia Nurse doing really well for Team Canada this summer also. Uh, Carlos saying, what am, I what am I still looking at the season as if somehow Darko improves this ragtag team by the end of the season? I mean, we want to see improvements still, Carlo. That's the whole point of playing games is to develop and improve. And, well, we won't see it leaps and bounds to get wins more, but we can see individual player performances that are improving from game to game through through the rest of this part of the season for sure so that's what you're looking at is you're wanting to see how these ragamatag guys get better by the end of the season i see what you're saying there uh seymour saying no snow you are lucky as f no not right now but it, it may be coming uh and seymour saying jill trust me you can't go wrong with that 89 89 i don't even know what you're talking about uh fiercely saying earlier this season nba chef said he saw chet working out in a sports bra I'm lurking for that clip. Couldn't find it nowhere. <laughs> ah, that's hilarious. That is a pretty funny. So Chev's a little bit of a hater too. Yeah, I love you, Chev. Whatever you're doing, I know you switched to Patreon and you're on Spotify more. 
than YouTube because you're sick. You hate this fucking platform that I'm on right now because they fuck with you this season. So I totally get your migration to another place, uh, Chev. And I hope that the transition has been very smooth. And hopefully you've even got more followers since then. Big respect to NBA Chev from Rapper's Freak. And uh, yeah, you do what you do, my guy. You do it very well. That's right. Uh, let's see. Randolph saying, blessings, beloved Raptor Freaks. Most informative gang on this game day. Faith is the substance of this hope for the evidence of things not seen. Let's exercise faith for a better team next year. I love this. Man, Randolph coming with some really awesome blessings and prayers for us. Faith. We're talking about faith. And right now, you know, there's going to be different levels of faith around the Raptors uh, fan community. There's a lot of people that are very pessimistic. There's some people that are like us that can really see the bright future coming up and be very happy and proud and excited for it. And some people that are already kind of Debbie Downers, droopy dogs, saying, well, they're going to be bad for five years now. Mm, droopy dog. Come on now. Get out of here, droopy dog. Yeah, go go run around and let that, that wolf guy chase you in elevators. And you can just like appear and disappear. And then, oh, he's trying to get away from you. And then all of a sudden, you're right there everywhere he goes. I'm right here. And he's like, ah, and his eyes shoot out. Yeah, droopy dog. Yeah, I don't know. In some ways, we got to have faith about the Raptors getting better for next season and getting better at greener pastures in the future and outcomes and games and stuff like that. That's what I think. I think if uh, Darko's a farmer, he's out there cultivating. He's sowing the seeds for later, for crops. They're going to be bountiful and plentiful. And that's what we're waiting for. We're going to see the seeds being sown for the rest of the end of the season. And hopefully they grow into amazing things and we get to reap the benefits of it at, at the end of it. the crop the bumper crop of amazing good things for the Raptors. I'm with you. Let's have faith in this. Let's have faith in the Raptors getting better and good and better outcomes going forward. That's right. Cowboys saying alley oop to the sheriff. Uh, mail up, mail up, sign, mail up, flag up. Okay, alley oop to the sheriff. I'm going to give a dunk to Randolph also. So we're giving a, a one to Sheriff Seymour Pape. He's at 36 now. He's got the 36 and uh, Randolph Phillips. We got him. I'm going to give him uh, his uh, 12th, number 12 dunk for the season. Good stuff. Uh, Jillian's saying MVP SGA, MVP SGA. Yeah, see, she's saying three times MVP SGA. It's just like Beetlejuice rules. That's how you get it to happen. Uh, let's see. Fiercely saying my daughter is playing with her shitty team tonight. Well, that's not that's not the right attitude, Marie. Don't tell them that. It's like they show up to the practice. All right, here you are. It's your shitty team. Wait, what did you say? The coach says. So fiercely, what did you just say? They say, yeah, this is her shitty team. She's on another team that's better. And y'all are the shitty team. Do you let the young women hear that? <laughs> uh, none of them are watching, hopefully. Man, what if one of those kids is on the RFF? What if they're watching right now? And they hear, wait, wait, I know fiercely saw Sarah Jr. They're, we're the shitty team? What's going on here? <laughs> Please don't tell her I said it, but you're a fam and I can share I'm buying wine at lunchtime. I can sense two L's. <laughs> Her TGIF is full of a uh, 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 liquid lubricant to get through the day. I, it sounds like here we go. All right. Well, fiercely, whatever you got to do, just be a great supportive mom to fiercely saucer junior. And hopefully, you know, maybe they'll surprise you. Maybe they don't catch the L today. Maybe they, they have a better chance of winning than we do. The Raptors. I think they might. So, Hey, what, anything's possible. Any day, any given day, any team can win. That's right. Any team can win. That's right. Uh, most saying, if I remember, Sherman Hamilton and Alvin Williams got SGA winning the MVP. I like that prediction, and I want to go and put my name next to them and say, yeah, I'm predicting that SGA is going to win the MVP this year too. In fact, I want to, uh, I want to really, 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 really put that into, uh, put that into focus. Yeah, I really do. I want to put that into focus and make that happen. That's right. All right, let me see. I skipped ahead, and I want to make sure I keep, don't. I get them all. Randolph's got his prediction. For the game, let's write it in for uh, Mr. Phillips. Randolph is saying that he thinks it'll be 130 to 98. Uh, okay, yeah, nobody said that exactly yet. So, so that's perfect. Randolph, 130 to 98. You're only one point off of Trevor J. He's 130 to 97, and you're 130 to 98. So you guys will have very similar scores. We'll have to see who uh, gets them more right. All right, there's the sheriff's uh, prediction. He's been the most right. When we do this, so let's see what Seymour is getting 120 to 89, Oklahoma City. Let me see. How did I do compared to him? Because that's the way to look at it. 120 to 89. Yeah. Okay. That's probably realistic. He said 89 before. He said 93. And he, oh, man. He's, he's, he's good at getting the Raptor score. 
Uh, Cowboys saying if SGA gets MVP, that will be the first Canadian. Well, also at Raptors' longest losing streak. No, that won't be the first Canadian. Steve Nash is a two-time NBA MVP uh, uh, Canadian. He is the only guy who got it before. So SGA will be the second Canadian to get it because Steve Nash for the Suns was a two-time MVP in the mid-2000s. So, Cowboy, we can't forget about our guy Steve Nash. Come on now. Uh, Fiercely saying someone wrote Giannis uh, rose to Dennis like Michael Myers. He did come up real quick, and he did butt his head into him. He did. I don't know what the repercussions of that. Did Giannis get thrown out? I don't think so. That would be a great trade, though. Dennis gets thrown out, and Giannis, hey, that's a great trade for the Nets. Yeah, you're going to throw two people out. You're going to throw those two out. I think they just gave free throws, and everybody stayed in the game. I don't even think Dennis got thrown out. I think he got like a he got a taunting foul or something like that. And they shot free throws, and it ended up that Milwaukee got an extra free throw in the whole exchange. Really, is I think that's all that happened. I'm pretty sure. Uh, let's see, Jill's got me on blast with Masai. <laughs> uh, Seymour saying Steve Nash was the first Canadian MVP of the league. Cowboy, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, let's see, uh, Cowboy saying shit. I should have known that. Respect, Sheriff. Yeah, it's all good, Cowboy. You just, it's all good. We just forgot about him. Uh, Chris is saying, what if Shet saves a baby from a burning building? If he does a Bam Bam Bigelow. Wow, if he does a Bam Bam Bigelow, would I like him then? No. <laughs> I think it's staged. I was like, they did that shit to stage it, to make him more of an NBA superstar. Like, are they going to market him? Is he going to be more of, like, a golden boy? Or am I going to have to see him in NBA ads all over the place like Jason Tatum? Ugh, gross. Ugh, that's the hot way I feel about it right now. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Chris is saying, also, I think the Wemby-Chet thing is false dichotomy. I'm on both team Chet and both team Wemby. Both amazing big men. Happy they're in the NBA. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, this is a robbery. It is a robbery. The Spurs and the Thunder are too close in proximity. These guys are too comparable as far as their height. They've already been hyped up as a matchup. In some ways, the NBA would be stupid not to take the Holmgren Wemba Yama matchup and really market it in the future because these guys are the future of the league, the height that they're at. This is very much our current bird and magic. And I think that you're downplaying the actual true uh, thing that's going on. The fact that they're in the same division, the fact that they're going to play each other a lot is going to really build up a rivalry over time. Because every time they play each other, it is going to be like looking like, oh, wow, look at those two, two, two all guys going against each other, Victor and Chet. So, uh, I mean, I don't know if it's a false dichotomy. It may not happen completely naturally, but it should happen. It should happen. And I think it already has been happening. You know, I think it already has in some ways. I don't know. Chris and I, we can disagree on uh, Chet Holmgren stuff. He's obviously a huge fan, and I am the opposite. I am the opposite. Uh, cool Cat saying, these games leading up to the playoffs are super competitive and heated. Yeah, this is something that they said on the broadcast the other day. The NBA has morphed and changed because of the play-in. A lot of the changes they've done have made things a little bit tougher for teams at the bottom. It used to be that, the uh, you know, when the playoffs were the playoffs and there was no play-in, you know, you kind of get the playoff picture and the seeds and who's going to be where, and there's kind of not a lot of wiggle room. In some ways, there'll be more teams that like kind of not play as crazy good at the end of the season because they're already kind of set with where they're going to be in the postseason. But that's not the case anymore. Everything's so jammed up and close, and everything matters. So almost all the 30 teams that are in contention are playing their asses off still at this late stage in the season. This is a newer phenomenon in the last couple of years of the play-in. And uh, in some ways, it's bad for teams like us, but I'm good in the way that we want to lose. But it's bad for any team that's kind of struggling and trying to get something going because these teams are not letting up near the end of the season like they may have in past seasons. Every team's playing their ass off right up until the end of the season because the, cl the races are so close. And there's so much at stake between being in the play-in and being in the playoffs. And there's a lot of teams that are on the cusp of both. And so that, that's a lot of it right there. It's crazy, Cool Cat. It's it's good for the league. In some ways, I like it. It's better. In some ways, it, hey, it would, may have been an easy ride before, but the league is harder now, partly because of the play-in. Yeah. Uh, Seymour's saying, I rock with Chet. I'm sorry. I'm sorry because if SGA wins MVP, Chet is all in with it. Hey, guys, listen. We can have different alliances on outside things, and I'm totally fine with it. In some ways, I got to be a San Antonio guy. That's my team. And I know that it's not really a San Antonio versus Oklahoma City thing. But if I'm going to pick a long slender man, it's going to be Wimbayama. That's my guy. All right, Seymour, you're Team Chet. Okay, that's fine. Y'all can be Team Chet. I'll be Team Wimby. And we'll have a friendly rivalry on this channel. 
and it won't be anything kind of like crazy or mean. Let's just have fun and watch it. That's right. Uh, Fiercely saying, you skipped my comment. I dis uh, disclosed how I found the answer to the cosmic card. All right, let me see what I missed. In some ways, I'm like having so many, some some problems with the chat in different places, guys. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, let me see that. I read that one. Uh, I read that one too. Um, I read that one. Um, I read that one. I read that one. Um, you said if I tell you, I must eliminate you, which I won't do because I love my Raptor Freak fam. Is that what you said? <laughs> um, I don't know. Is that the comment that I missed? I, in some ways, it's so fast and furious, fiercey. It's hard for me to figure out uh, sometimes stuff like that. Did you? Did you? Uh, did you look it up? Write it in again. Did you look it up somehow, some way? I want to figure out how you fit, how you knew. I don't, I don't see the comment right now. I don't know why. I don't know why. Carlos saying, if I see a more coherent Raptor team today, it's a win in my eyes. Yeah, we just want to see them playing right, playing ethical, playing like good uh, basketball with not many mistakes, very few turnovers, high percentage shots, sharing the ball, good effort after loose balls, making your free throws. All that kind of stuff is important. Uh, Fiercely saying, have fun at the game, Cool Cat. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, Monique's going too. Uh, cool Cat saying, I have not bought any tickets as yet. I have to watch the snow to see if it impacts their driving. Oh, she doesn't know if her friends are arriving from out of town. And it may determine whether she goes or not. Okay. Uh, cool Cat saying, nah, we'll never boo the Raptors. Respect to all put that on the jersey. Yeah, that's right. Jill saying, Lex is in a good mood. I'm in an okay mood. I'm trying to be in a better mood on the channel. I realize I've been grumpy and kind of an ass at times in the last couple months. Well, you see where the Raptors are. In some ways, that will get my temperament the wrong way. <laughs> but yeah, Jill, I'm trying to be in a better mood and be more positive on this channel. It's a positive channel. Well, I better be more positive. I better walk the walk is what, I, what I've decided on my own personally thinking about my show. You know, I watch every stream back and it's, you know, I do try and improve from stream to stream and look at what I'm doing and try and do better. Whether it's me swaying around or doing some dumb thing with the mic, I'll try and do better with the mic uh, over time. There's all kinds of little improvements. I'm in development also, just like the players that we're going to watch tonight. And I'm constantly developing and improving things on the download around this channel. Uh, it, you may not see it all the time, but there are things that I'm doing that are changing. Uh, and it'll really change next month when I move out of this apartment. So the, 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 everything's going to be changing a lot very soon. Watch. Uh, Cowboy's saying alley-oop to Cool Cat all day and every day. All right, we'll give a, a Cool Cat a dunk for uh, being such a good fan. She's going to go to the game, take some people to their first game, maybe dependent on the snow. And she's got 12 dunks herself now. All right, let's see. Fiercely saying Jalen Green plays well because of his baby coming. He said it after a game. He's motivated. There you go. So, okay. So he's just playing well right now because he's having this baby with his Instagram model that's had babies with everybody already. Oh, my gosh. So it is sad life. This lady's collecting celebrities in different places. I don't know her name or anything like that. But she has like two babies with two other famous people already. She's now she's having her third baby with uh, Jalen Green. I don't think this is an occupation, young lady. Like, what the fuck is your life? Come on. It, really, are you just like a Venus flytrap? And you're just trying to catch, like, fam famous celebrities? And it's like, ah, I got another one. Mm, mm, get some money for my children. Get some money like that. I mean, I, I hate to say it. Because there are women out there that are trying to do this with NBA players. Latch on to them. Get a baby with them. And get that money train for the rest of their life. I hate to say it, but that's just the damn truth. We know it is. And in some ways, I listen, you could be excited about having that baby with that lady, but oh my gosh, the baggage around her. Oh my gosh, Jalen Green. What the fuck, bro? What the fuck, man? <laughs> uh, cool Cat saying, SGA, Dort going to ball out for their family and friends. Chet wants to show out for his friend, Scotty. Blowout incoming. No harm this year. Yeah, I know that he's okay with Scott. They're cool, but I don't know how much they're friends. I know that Scotty's glowingly said things about Chet and that he, he thinks Chet's kind of cool. But I don't know if they're actually that tight. Do you know for sure that they're friends and they talk or anything? Like that? I don't think so. I think that Scotty's an admirer of him as far as like he's seen Chet play. And he's like, oh, Chet's good. That's all I remember from Twitch. But I don't remember hearing that they actually have a friendship or connection. I'm not sure. Randolph Phillips did get the card later. Andrew Long. Andrew Long. Yeah. David's got in on the score prediction game today. David Saborin. 
competitive, very, very competitive. I, I missed out on playing Jonas last night. I'm so mad at myself. I missed the deadline to set up my fantasy team, and I did not get the points from Jonas Valanciunas last night. I missed out on 12 points against David. I'm like, I'm so mad at myself that I messed that up. 103 to 98, and he's saying the Raptors going to win. Look at David. He's a real one. Look at that. He's a real one. He wants the Raptors to win. He's saying we can. You know, the last time we played them in OKC, it was a double overtime game. It was very close, and they just beat us barely. That's pretty cool. That was in February. I think around when we had spicy barbecue. No, there was no spicy then, I don't think. But we did take them to double overtime the, the time we played them. So it wasn't a blowout when we played the Thunder the first time. We hung with them all the way through two overtimes and lost at the end there. So, yeah, I mean, we've been competitive with them. We'll have to see. We'll have to see. I don't feel real good about it. I'd feel better if we had Quickly or Barrett or any of those other guys there in some ways. you know. Uh, Chris is saying Chet's not a rookie, and, and Wemby is a real rookie? He played professional ball in France. Chet played uh, college ball and got hurt. Not his fault. How is he the real rookie? But I respect the Chet hate, Lex. No, I'm not arguing any of this. I say that both of them are rookies right now. They're both rookies right now. I, I don't care about the professional career in France of Wemba Yama. I don't care about the injury last year. The Chet Holmgren played his first NBA game this season. He's a rookie. It's just like many other players before that missed their first season and they get their rookie year status the next year. That's just how it's always been in the NBA. So there's nothing – I'm not arguing anything about Chet being a rookie. And those two are the guys competing for rookie of the year. In some ways, the the, the record of the Thunder – is the best case for Chet to beat Victor Wembanyama. But if you really look at their stats compared to each other, Victor is by far the better player individual stat-wise. So that's what you got to weigh when you're thinking about rookie of the year this year. Is like you got to look at that record for the Spurs and the record for the Thunder and maybe take that into account, but also look and see how much more Victor's stats look better than Chet. And that's going to be the whole versus on that. I don't think there's an outside guy that has a chance otherwise. Maybe Brandon Miller, maybe Derek Lively, the second for Dallas. But it really is a two-man race for Victor and Chet. And uh, some people were saying earlier this season that they should be co-rookies of the year. That they should be co-rookies of the year. I don't know. I think they should just give it to Victor. Forget about Chet. Give it to Victor. He's the phenom. He's going to be the guy in the future that everybody's going to be like, yeah, he's a rookie of the year. He should have been the rookie of the year. What do you mean he was a co-rookie of the year with Chet Holmgren? People look at that in the future with Victor's career coming up, and they'll be like, that's that's the fucking mistake. That would be like putting Scotty as co-rookie of the year with Evan Mobley and be like, why the fuck did we do that? So in some ways, we can't do that. In some ways, we should have just a straight-up rookie of the year. And I'm picking Victor, of course, because I'm a hater. I'm a hater. That's right. And I, I, I respect my hate. <laughs> Thank you. I'll respect your love. You can love him. I can hate him. It's a free country. Uh, Jill's saying, we weren't trying to be mean with scoring. We're trying to have alleviate a, a time when the Raptors are having their own challenges. Everybody's been uh, partaking too. No, Jill, it's just uh, right now we can do it. These are the kind of conditions where I feel comfortable doing this sport score prediction game. I mean, we could have done this a long time ago, but I didn't for, for very specific reasons. And it is because we don't want to jinx them. We don't want to, we don't want to put weird shit out there. You know, in some ways, in some ways right now, there's nothing to lose. So it's safe to do it. But this is not going to be a game that we do in the future. And it's not trying to be mean or anything. It's just, you know, it's a fun game to do. I used to do it all the time during the Tampa season. It was a part of my content on Instagram when I did my old juice show. That was one of the main things I did was I did a score prediction for every game. So, I, I mean, I, I don't mind doing it. It's, 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 it's just we can't do it when it's an important time. It's right now. It, it doesn't matter. In Tampa, it didn't matter as much either. Uh, Cowboys saying Cookie Monster in the house. Cookie Monster. Cookie Monster. Oh, David. Yeah, Cookie Monster. Uh, Jill saying, hi, David. Uh, what's your SGA points guess? Uh, Jillian, Cowboy, Ref, Rabbit Freak Family, dap, dap, dap. Uh, SGA is getting 29 in the L tonight. Uh, that's what David thinks. He's going to think he's not going to get a 30, and the Oklahoma City Thunder are going to lose. David, man, you're a badass, man. I love that David's predicting the Raptors going to win tonight. 98 uh, to 103, Raptors going to win. I like it. I like it. Uh, Cowboys saying it just started snowing in Scar. Oh, yeah, it's snowing here now, too. It just started out there in Scarberia. Well, it just started snowing here in uh, uh, East York. Yeah, it's snowing here also. Uh, let's see. Jillian smiling. Uh, Chris is saying, drinking early, David? Laugh out loud. Anyway, talk to everyone later. Have a good day. What do you mean? Why are you saying that about David? David is not drinking right now. Let's see. Bye, Chris. And uh, Fiercey saying, MSJ and David, they are both eligible rookies. But if he got to still travel with the team while they were losing last year, he has an advantage, in my opinion. 
better preparation for the season. Yeah, I mean, I get what you're saying, Fiercy, but that's that shouldn't matter. That shouldn't matter. This has happened so many times in the history of things. I think Ben Simmons was this too. He was supposed to come in. He missed his whole entire first rookie year, and then he came back the second year. I don't know. In some ways, this is common. This has happened before. Guys missed their rookie year for certain reasons, and then they, their second year it ends up being the rookie year. So I don't know. That It's not really that's an advantage. He sat around and watched them play. Yeah, maybe, maybe. David's saying, nah, I just never assume me or my teams are ever going to lose shit. I don't give a fuck if the franchise is tanking. The players are playing to win. Oh, you're saying he's drinking because he's picking the Raptors to win. No, I support him. And even if it's delusion, no, I support him. And I wouldn't accuse somebody of drinking in the morning because I made a comment like that. No, 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 no. He's a real one. In some ways, I, I really respect David doing that. Seriously. I, in some ways, he doesn't care about winning the score ch challenge. He just wants to support his team. And I really do respect that. I do. Uh, Seymour said, I'm only on I'm on day three of snow and it won't stop till Tuesday. OK, voices carry. All right. All right. He said, shut up. He said, shut up. Oh, God. The king is up. Voices carry. Yeah, till Tuesday. All right. Uh, cool Cat saying, NBA Chev removed all of his previous YouTube because he was de demonetized and not given any indication of the clips that are problematic. He started a new and uh, his raw clips are on Patreon. Yeah, so is he not on YouTube at all, at, in any kind of way on his YouTube channel at all at this point? Well, I'm glad I'm a little bit different kind of thing than him. In some ways, I, I'm not interested in the same goals as Chev is. And in some ways, I'll probably stay here as long as I can. But if YouTube gets weird with me, I will migrate out of here. And just so y'all know, it will be Twitch. If there's anything that happens to me here, I will end up being on Twitch next. So I don't want that ever predict that. I love YouTube. I think YouTube has been fantastic for me. But if they fucked with me like they fucked with Chev recently, well, I might make some big decisions like he has. But I'm too small potatoes. In some ways, they, you know, listen, come, don't mess with me, YouTube. Just let me do what I do. Just let me do what I do. All right. Just let me do what I do. Yeah. Yeah. But good for you, Chev. And uh, do what you got to do, my guy. I fully support you. Uh, Carlos saying it's like spring and winter is having a custody battle, snowing and freezing. That's hilarious, Carlos JS. I've never heard it put that way. It's like spring and winter are having a custody battle. I'm giving you a three pointer. 18, 18 dunks for Carlo now because that's just really creative. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. No, it seemed like we were with uh, spring for about a month, and now all of a sudden winter's come around saying, yeah, it's my time now. <laughs> it's my weekend. <laughs> uh, I don't want to go with uh, uh, Mother Spring. <laughs> I want to go with – I mean, I want to be with Mother Spring. I don't want to be with Father Winter. Ah, no, don't make me go with Dad. <laughs> uh, Fiercey saying, uh, if you travel with them and experience NBA life prior to actually playing, I mean, I, that, I get what you're saying. But I still don't think that's as much of an advantage as you think. But even so, it doesn't matter. Wembayama's playing better than him. That's for sure. I can say that. Uh, Jill saying, Seymour, try minus 12 today. All right. Jeez, we had a lot of weather today. Uh, David saying, um, uh, hang on, it jumped. Annoying. Uh, let's see. Uh, I don't need to mentally prepare myself for losses. I've competed at a similar level. Losing is a part of the process. The highs and lows don't bother me. I'm used to it. It's in the blood. There you go. David's speaking from his competitiveness with his uh, his his uh, his uh, stuff from his bridge career. David, very much a high level bridge player in the, globally uh, in his life, and yeah, he knows about the high stakes and stuff from his competition playing bridge at a very high level. So yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give David a dunk just for that. Because honestly, I mean, listen, I get what he's saying, and uh, like, I'm all about it. 48 hours, you got Nick Nolte and Eric, Eddie, Eddie Murphy now, David. 48 hours, y'all be cool. All right, let's see. Uh, Randolph saying, uh, Lex, there's no justification for violence of any kind in any place for any reason, especially in sports. It matters not who you are. Violence has consequences. Clean up the game. Well, I mean, the game has always been violent since the very beginning. In some ways, it's the most watered down and least violent it has ever been at this point. It really is. In some ways, this league has become very wussified. I, I, Charles Barkley would say that. There's a lot more fighting and punching in the 70s and 80s, and then that went away, and then there was a, you know, a little bit of skirmishes. Now, in some ways, the NBA really doesn't allow for any kind of stuff. Now, I would say this. The things that Dennis and DeMar did last night were not that really – like they were, they were aggressive. They were physical. 
but they weren't really like fighting. It's not like they threw punches or anything. In some ways, you could say the play that DeMar did to Jalen Green was dirty, sure. But it wasn't that much different than any other play that happens on the court a, a lot with physicality and pushing people. So, and it could be that Jalen Green really uh, pushed the inertia or the momentum of him getting pushed and made it look even worse. We know that guys are selling shit, overselling also, like uh, little things. Just ask Kelly Olenek. He'll tell you how to oversell something and make it look like it's a lot worse than it is. So I don't know how much the factor was that Jalen Green oversold the toss by DeMar DeRozan. Listen, I'm not about throwing punches. That's definitely a bad thing on the NBA court. But a little bit of shoving, a little bit of intimidation, a little bit of shit talking, a little bit of standing up for yourself. I'm all about all that, though. That that that's uh, that should be something like you, you shouldn't be out there being a wimp and letting people punk you and push you around. And Dennis Schroeder does not allow that. And that's part of the reason why he did what he did. He did not throw any punches. He, all he did was he 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 pushed him when he's trying to make a layup and he fell to the ground. In some ways, Giannis, he's a, such a bigger man. Well, he crumbled like a, a you know, a building uh, getting demolished when uh, Dennis kind of hit him. And then he, you know, Dennis did, shouldn't have stood over him. I don't agree with that part completely. Uh, you know, kind of taunting, like standing over somebody like that. That's kind of BS. But it's not like he threw anything. And then Giannis headbutted him. So if anything, Giannis was the most physical in that altercation with uh, with hurt and intention of violence. And the other way, I would say Dylan Brooks was ready to fight more than De DeMar was. But I don't know. I'm going to stand up for my guys. And I get you. I get you what you're saying, Randolph. And it's a great philosophy and i think that the nba has gotten more and more like that as time gone on there's no full out brawls there's not a bunch of flurry of punches going on every which way and just absolute chaos not any time since the malice in the palace and that was such a black eye that the nba has really made sure that there ain't gonna be no repeat of anything like the malice in the palace or any of those kind of little fracases where a bunch of people are throwing punches all of different parts of the court no, they keep it contained really well. Mark Lindsay right in the middle of things with that last night. Right in the middle of there with a uh, with a, uh, I forget which one. He was either refing the the Bucks game, but I saw referee Mark Lindsay. Oh yeah, it was the first altercation I saw. So it was the Bulls one. Mark Lindsay right in between everything. Right in between there as the ref. Yeah, respect uh, with your uh, pacifism and nonviolence. Uh, I'm with you on it. I'm with you on it, Randolph. I don't want to see anybody get punched or hurt. And, uh, you know, real violence is bad, but a little bit of show violence, pushing around and talking trash, it's going to be in the game. Uh, Seymour saying, uh, Ed Jill, damn, this weather sucks. Trevor, come save us. <laughs> Trevor's down in uh, Fort Lauderdale, isn't he? He's down there. <laughs> uh, come save the Canucks. Uh, uh, Cowboy's saying, uh, try to hop in later. Got to drive up north. If I can't have make, have a great day and safe day. And let's go, Raptors. All right, thanks, Cowboy. Good to see you. Good luck on the on the snow, Cowboy. <laughs> uh, Cowboy saying thanks, Miss Moody. All right, a lot of crosstalk, Jill. Once again, uh, Cool Cat saying in the East, only three to eight are still up for grabs. In the West, one through seven are still up for grabs. I love the competition. That's exactly why it is so competitive, and nobody's not turning down their their uh, their gears. Everybody's going full tilt, trying to get to the end and get the best possible winning percentage and placement in, for the postseason. And, man, they did a good job in safeguarding this. But in some ways, being a team like us right now, well, in some ways it helps us, but in some ways it doesn't. It doesn't help us get wins, that's for sure. Uh, Seymour saying, how far north are you going, Cowboy? East of Gwillenberry. He's going back to the same place he was before. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Seymour saying, Jill, are you a MK or a coach girl? What, what the fuck is uh, that Google Maps time? He's going to be like maybe 45 minutes north of Toronto. That's it. Uh, let's see. Cool Cat saying, Lex, you share your time with us daily. You're a human and we have a range of emotions. It's called the state of humanity. We ride with you always. I appreciate that, Cool Cat. You know, I try to be as the best version of me as much as possible in the morning. And I do really kind of like as much as guys may prepare for games like later today, I do do things to prepare to be mentally right for this channel. You know, maybe it's just me trying to get a good night's sleep. Maybe it's me like making sure I eat something before I come on the stream. You know, there's all kinds of different factors that can have different things with my temperament. And, uh, yeah, if I have a really crazy, outrageous, like, mad anger uh, uh, raging against the machine because of, like, the system that we live in and fucking corrupt ass motherfuckers at the top of it, yeah, I can be a little bit more angry that day. But if I'm not thinking about them, maybe I'm a little more light. But I appreciate you allowing me the variance, just like the weather, to be who I am. 
I really do appreciate that, Cool Cat. Now, uh, Fiercely Sam, moving exciting, Lex. New beginnings. This is going to be very exciting, Fiercely. And you guys are going to see my journey for sure. You're going to see my journey because you guys are RFF and you see me every day. So you're going to definitely see my journey and I'll keep you guys up to date on it for sure. Uh, Carlos said, I'm amazed how these baddies are defying time. Even Jalen Brown's girl is almost 40. That's the other thing. Like this woman that Jalen had the baby with is like much older than him. I don't know. In some ways, it's like, look, it's your life. It's your life choices. You know, really? Come on, man. Or it's like, why can't you pick a nice young lady for yourself, Jalen Green? You know, what? what's up with this? This lady is a trap. She's a Venus flytrap. She's trapping people. Trapping them. That's right. Uh, let's see. Uh, cool Cat saying, Andrea is an entrepreneur within the sports and entertainment industry. I say she's an entrepreneur. Yeah. I don't know what she does. I don't know. Uh, maybe I shouldn't be dissing her. But, yeah, these, these kind of people have been around sports for a long, long time. And they try and latch and get in there. And this, th these players get taught about them when they come in. It's like, yeah, there's baddies. There's, uh, you know, there's IG models. There's these women going to be coming to games. And they're going to be smiling at you from the stands. And they're going to be like, ooh, look at me. Hey, maybe you'll give me my uh, your hotel number. And I can come see you later. There's a lot of that around the NBA. And some of them will try and snatch people. You don't think somebody's trying to steal Scotty Barnes' DNA from him somehow, some way, and get all pre impregnated by him? Yeah. Yeah, that's why these guys have to watch out. They really, really do. And, uh, well, Jalen Green, I'm glad you're happy to get a bundle of joy coming. And if you're happy to have it with that young lady, well, power to you, man. Power to you. I just don't – I mean, I get it. I hear the story about this, and I'm like, holy crap, what's going on here, Jalen Green? What's going on here, man? You don't see the the past of her life already? And it's like, is she, like, collecting lovers, like, uh, uh, cosmic classic cards of the day? She's just your latest card? Is that what it seems like in some ways? In some ways, I don't want to uh, genderize this behavior because the men do this kind of shit the other way, so – I would treat them just the same way. They're philandering around and uh, having babies with different women all over the place. Well, I don't know. I mean, in some ways, it is what it is. And it's just what it is. In some ways, it's not basketball. Why am I talking about it? Because uh, it's Jalen Green. And we're, he just happened to be a subject for today. Uh, Seymour's saying, uh, the fact Gilbert Arenas had her first, now she with Jalen Green is crazy. But hey, I tip my hat to her. She knows how to work her magic. Yeah, it is what it is. In some ways, I'm not that interested in this aspect of the NBA in any kind of way. I know that some of the social media places are all about it and really like pushing this kind of shit all over the place. In some ways, this is none of my business. Now, I don't need to know about players' uh, sex lives or who they're seeing or any of that kind of stuff. It really is none of my business. And honestly, I'm not totally comfortable talking about it all. But this is out in the open, this whole thing that's going on with Jalen Green and his uh, baby mama coming. Yeah, uh, Fiercely saying her name is Drea. She's 39, and she's the same age as her son, 22. He's the same age as her son, 22, hence why the backlash. But I don't get involved in rich people business, laugh out loud. Yeah, okay, so that's some of the aspects. She has children with different people from what I heard. Like, she has a child with a football player also, and a child with somebody else from what I hear, like, that, that's famous. And she's already getting support from. So, I mean, it is what it is. This is what it is. If this is a, the, the opportunities these people want to do, if they're called entrepreneurs, okay. I mean, I don't know what they do. I don't know what they do. Fish is saying, yep, work her magic. That's right. Hey, do her, do her thing. I'm not going to hate. In some ways, like I said, this is not an, uh, a subject that I'm going to talk a whole lot about on this channel very often. Yeah. Yeah, let's see. Uh, Jill saying, Lex, you want to do a Zoom some? A Zoom someday? A Zoom? Oh, you mean like have multiple people in boxes? I don't have Zoom on my computer. I, I'll do the call-in show. Uh, I don't, uh, man, that, that could be something maybe it evolves to at some point. But I don't know. In some ways, I have to, it's really difficult to do multiple voices with different boxes. This is like stepping over. And if some people aren't media trained, like I, I can't have y'all being in a Zoom box with me. If you guys aren't media trained, like uh, people like Matt Devlin and Jack Armstrong, Alvin Williams, they know when to speak and not speak over each other. But if there's a delay, you know how it is in Zoom meetings. How if people are like, oh, uh, 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 and they're trying to say something and some people are trying to talk at the same time. In some ways, that can be an issue. That can be an issue. So I, if some of y'all were more media savvy and knew how to do it with me in the right way where you could bounce off with me uh, from a distance, I would do it. But I, in some ways, I don't know if uh, I don't know which one of you guys are. And in some ways, also, I don't know if I want to try and experiment with it because it could be really bad. It could be a really bad stream. And uh, in some ways, I well, I don't know. I'll keep it in mind. I'll keep it in mind. It, it, it is something that could possibly happen. 
in the years to come. It could. It could. Uh, cool Cat's saying there are thousands of entrepreneurs in, in, within the sports and, and entertainment industry. Rookies, rookies and all NBA players have se sessions with on how to deal with people with the entrepreneurial service choice. Laugh out loud. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can call them entrepreneurs if you want. You know, there's all kinds of different terms that have been called at different times. Entrepreneurs, yeah. Uh, cool Cat's saying there are approved services that service players, etc. Players that go outside into the Wild West, that's their prerogative. Ha ha. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that this makes sense. You know, there's going to be certain uh, escort services or certain services around Toronto that these guys can call. And, and you know, in some ways it's all set up with the agency, non-disclosure, uh, all this kind of stuff. It's safer because the, the these women are know that they're, you can't do any kind of fucked up shit where you're like coming at them in public and making a big deal of their business. You, you get in a lot of trouble with your company and all kinds of stuff. No, this is this sounds right. Now, if you go out into the Wild West and you go and meet somebody who's not involved in that, yeah, that could be a little dicey. That could be a little dicey. That's for sure. Yeah. It's like I always wonder, like when I'm on uh, Twitter or something, and I'll see like uh, uh, Scotty will post something on his Twitter, and then they'll say there'll be some baddies in the comments saying, I was with Scotty two nights ago. Scotty's great. I'm like, I'm wondering, well, maybe that's true. I, maybe she was with Scotty two nights ago. I don't know. It's none of my business. <laughs> it's none of my business. Yeah, these entrepreneurs. Yeah, they're not any of my business. Fiercely saying, you have a point, Lex. Ben Simmons traveling with the team didn't help him in any way. <laughs> I'm giving you a three-pointer for that. That's a funny joke. That's a funny joke, Fiercy. That's really, really funny. You're at 58. Look at that. Fiercy saw Sarah 58 dunks this year. Yeah, that's pretty funny right there. Fiercy saying, I want to see Chet in the sports bra. Anyone finds a link, please share. All right, yeah, put it in the Facebook chat <laughs> so Fiercy can see it at ASAP as soon as you guys find it. That's hilarious. You guys are pr pretty uh, live this morning. I got to say that. You guys are pretty live. All right, let's see. Cool Cat saying NBA Chev is still on YouTube. He has new clips, now more family friendly. Ha ha. The unfiltered expressions are on Patreon. Okay, so he's not cussing, maybe not saying some N words on uh, YouTube at this point. I wish he wouldn't use the N word so much sometimes. It does bug me. It is a little bit of a turnoff. Uh, Seymour saying at Fiercy, it wasn't a bra, just an extra sh sh medium sh tank top. Laugh out loud. It probably did look like some sort of weird bra, though. I bet you it did. Uh, Joe saying Chev is still around, but his main monies are via Patreon. Lex, with my email and with an email list, you would protect yourself against any YouTube weird weirdities. Well, I would say this: I just have game. I I just have uh, game plans just in case contingency plans, and that's that's all. I mean, in some ways, the way that I'll keep in contact with people is just do a search for Raptor Street, or whatever uh, uh, place I'll be. I don't want to leave YouTube. I don't want to leave here anytime soon. And if this can just continue to be what it is, it'll continue to be what it is. But uh, the Facebook group is a good way to tether yourself to us. If anything does happen and other, otherwise just a search engine, just put Raptors freak in. You'll find where I am, wherever it is. You'll find me in, in whatever way it is. That's right. Uh, David saying at Jill, I think I look taller in photos than I really am. Uh, I'm only six two, so I don't play ball anymore. No. No, I don't even. Why did you, what you did? She ask you about playing basketball or something. See, that's why crosstalk doesn't work, Jill. Is because I don't get the conversations you guys are having in the moment, and then when I read it, it's just it, in some ways it's just not good for this this channel having conversations. Please give me some cue cards, and we'll talk about what we're talking about. But no, like direct talking, no adding. You guys are adding too much in some ways, guys. Uh, let's see. Seymour saying, I think it, I'm the same height as Lex, 6'4", six, 6'5"-ish. Six, well, you are tall then. Yeah, I'm about 6'4". Cowboy's about our height. Chris is a little bit taller. MSJ's a little bit taller, I think. And, uh, yeah, most of us are like 6'4 and up. Like David, around that height, 6'2". Uh, Cowboy, myself, around 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, and, yeah, Seymour, if you're around there too, yeah, we got a good basketball team. We could show up. And we could We could do some damage. They had like the media basketball game yesterday. Savannah Hamilton, Samson Folk, some of the media people playing basketball at Scotiabank Arena yesterday, uh, having their media day. I bet you we could go down there, the Rapper Freak family, and kill them. So we got a lot of height. We got a lot of height. We go down there and mess them up. Uh, David saying, although when I was 16, I could dunk. I believe that. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Seymour, okay. All right. All right. David saying, that was so cool. Like, white boys can jump. <laughs> Okay, David. Uh, David saying, watch out, 905. I may do the time warp and come to the tryouts next year. That's hilarious. Oh, and David's gifted some subscriptions to uh, Smooth Brown Man, MSJ. Mischief. Mischief is here. Good to see Jay's here. 
I hope you had a good trip down south, uh, Mischief. G has gotten another gifted and Wayne Strainer. That's a great starting five right there. Smooth, MSJ, Mischief, G, and Wayne. Nice, nice. Uh, Kareem saying it would be nice to see Ed Hockley in the middle of NBA grapples. Ed Hockley. Where do I know that name from? In the middle of NBA grapples. Ed Hockley. I'm trying to remember what that name is. Uh, Seymour saying, David, if you give to me, I want to say thank you. Yes, he did. No, he didn't. You didn't get it. <laughs> you didn't get it, Seymour. You might have gotten it before. I think you did get it from him before. Jill saying, Jill saying, Lex, mature women are the bomb. I'm not going to disagree with you on that. What do you mean? I, I, what do you, what do you, why are you speaking truth to me that I don't disagree with? Oh, come on. I'm not ages. Listen, I'm dating an age-appropriate woman to me. Like, oh, am I running around with 20-year-olds anymore? No, I'm not. No, I am not. I have dated very young women in my 30s and 40s. But right now, my girlfriend is 40 years old. So I'm not dating out of pocket. And yes, I do believe what you're saying, Jill. I'm not ageist. In some ways, I can't I can't date younger women. They're crazy. They don't have anything to do with me uh, as far as like things in common. And it's totally different generations. So, you know, I really do use that age rule. What do they say? Half your age plus seven years, right? So I'm 48. So half my age is 24 plus seven. That means I shouldn't be dating anybody under 31. And yeah, I keep to that rule. I do. I keep to that rule. Uh, let's see. Uh, most saying W stream Lex, keep at it always. Good times approaching. Go Raptors for life, regardless of what happens. Tonight's game isn't on my schedule. I'm going to Raptors versus Nets, then my friend's tournament. All right, Mo. So you aren't heading to the arena tonight, but you will be at the next Nets game. That's awesome, Mo. I hope you have a great Friday either way. And yeah, I'm with you. The way Monique feels about things, I'm exactly right. All good times are approaching, and uh, we are Raptors for life. That's right. I'm in the same place on the 26th. She'll see the Nets. Yeah, Seymour saying, Ravishing Rick Rude was my favorite. His intro speech are clutch. Yeah, Ravishing Rick Rude was something else. He knew how to talk some trash to that crowd. Yeah, he did. He said, you fat pieces of slobs. I'm going to show your women what a real man looks like. <laughs> and all the women are, oh, oh. <laughs> With his Tom Selleck Magnum P.I. mustache. Rick Rude. Yeah, Rick Rude. W, your weekend. Isaac Campbell saying that with the Grady Dick in his comment. That's right. W, your weekends, guys. Uh, David saying they have a little hand you can raise in Zoom. Keep Mike muted. Otherwise, RFF can do the Zoom thing for sure. Jill saying we're media savvy. I highly doubt that. I know you're a PR person, but does that mean you've been on the mic or in front of people? I'm telling you. In some ways, in some ways, it really is like uh, it's tough. Even when I've had people here in person like Adriana or Tom or Gerald, it's been a little awkward at times knowing when to speak and not jump on each other. So in some ways, it's a big ask. It's a big ask. I don't mind doing the phone call because in some ways we can control who's jumping in and talking on and that a little better. I don't know. I'll keep this in mind, David. In some ways, I don't have Zoom on my computer. I'm not technically literate. It may take a while of development. It's not something that's going to just say, oh, I'm going to do Zoom with you guys on Sunday or anything. No, no, no. This may be something that doesn't happen for like months or maybe even years. Let's just put it that way. If it is a logical progression, it makes sense. I'll do it. But uh, sometimes, too, also, it's like I don't know which ones of you guys to do this with and how to do it correctly and what, what would be worthwhile. In some ways, I don't want to be picking favorites. Uh, there may be a couple of you guys that I've worked with in the past that I feel more comfortable doing it with, like Gerald, like Nako the Nacho. But some of you guys, I, I, I'd be like, uh, I don't know if this is the right person. I don't know if this is the right person. I, I don't know if I want to do tryouts either for it. So I don't know. We'll, we'll revisit this, at the, but it's not going to be anytime soon. There's too much going on in my life in the next two months for me to even consider trying to set this up. And it may be something I try and do this later this summer, but don't even hold your breath on that. It may be something that I don't really, I'm not interested in doing for like a while. Let's do the call in show this summer first, and we'll see how that works for a while. Zoom may be in the future down the road, but the call in show is something we're going to do first. We'll do that this summer on Thursdays. Uh, let's see. Uh, Seymour saying, uh, Jill. Uh, okay, cool. Thanks for the info. Okay. I don't even know what y'all are talking about. And that's once again, why I don't like those kind of comments. Uh, Randolph is saying, um, uh, Lex, I have faith. The front office will add two good players through the draft and a good free agent, uh, with a few other adjustments and we'll be glued to our TVs all year round. Let's believe there you go. I love it. That's very positive. Randolph, you can get another dunk. 
Yeah, I, I feel like I need to give you more love, especially because, you you know, you're not very active in the stream. You sometimes just come in and do your comment, but I like seeing more comments from you in general. No, I agree with you. I think that we're going to get two good players in the draft. We'll, we'll get some sort of good free agency. And even with the guys that we have already currently, we're a lot stronger than people think. If we're fully healthy with RJ, Emmanuel, Scotty, and Yaka, we are a badass team. Seriously, we're a very badass. Yeah. Yeah, Jill saying, from your lips to God's ears. I don't even know what that's referenced to. Uh, Fiercely saying, if we follow the rules, we click on the raise hand button and speak at one at a time on a Zoom call. Also, Lex, very simple to create a free Zoom account. Video calls exceeding 60 minutes require money. Well, that's a problem right there because you know my streams are going to be over 60 minutes, and I ain't paying Zoom no money to do this. No, I don't want to incur costs on my channel. Uh, I get this. I have never done Zoom. I didn't. I didn't. I've not done Zoom in any kind of way. So I'm not savvy with it. I mean, I get the system what you're describing. It sounds like it could be doable. But man, would you rather have a Zoom call short show or a, a regular Lexathon? Is what I'm kind of saying. Because I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pay them money if it's gonna be over 60 minutes. Cost me money. No, 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 no. We ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. No, 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 no. But thanks for the information. We'll see if this is possible in some sort of way at some point. Uh, cool Cat saying, Zoom, you you use raise hand icons and speak with when acknowledged. I zoom, use Zooms daily. Use a moderator. See? All right. Maybe. I mean, I, it's really foreign to me. It really, really is. Really, really is foreign to me. Mischief, good to see you, my guy. Uh, Randolph saying, Lex, what's your thoughts on the NBA putting an end to the G League at night? Uh, team? I, I think it's levels. Uh, it levels the playing field for all the G League teams and players. This has been a weird experiment, the G League Ignite. They just started it in 2020, so it's like they're disbanding it after four years of use. Now, it was a huge fail this year. In some ways, part of the problem is that the G League Ignite completely failed at developing players. In some ways, Sco Scoot Henderson was kind of a failed development because they see his output this season and who he was supposed to be with like his hype last season. He was supposed to be like the number two pick and the best player after Wemby, but he's not. He is not. And there's a direct correlation to him being in the NBA and how he's playing right now with his, his waste of time on the G League Ignite. So they're finding that it's not cost effective. They're finding that it's not doing the things they want to, and they're just scrapping it. Now, it's also coinciding with the fact that all the G League teams, will, all the teams in the league will have G League teams now. In some ways, the G League Ignite was a pool team for high school players that aren't coming in or whatever. Also, just a team for people to get players from for their team. But it, it just hasn't worked out. So they're scrapping the idea, and all 30 teams in the NBA will have their own G League teams as affiliates next season. It'll finally happen. Portland and Phoenix will have teams, finally. So... Ah, it's it, it's a weird thing. It was an experiment that didn't wasn't successful, and they're scrapping it. It's just how it is. So G League Ignite will be going the way of the dinosaur. It is extinct, and that's just how it is. I mean, I don't know. That, that, I don't think that they ran it right. I don't know if the leadership was right. I don't know if these guys were learning the correct way. It may have been very similar to 905 this year. <laughs> uh, Isaac's got me and Mo on blast. I love it. Just me, Mo, and myself. Mo, just Mo, myself, and I. Do, 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 do. Just Mo, myself, and I. Do, 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 do. Uh, Kareem saying Ed Hockley is that buffed out NBA NFL ref. That's right. Ed Hockley. That's why I know that name. He's that NFL ref that was famous for a while and was on TV a lot. Okay. Yeah. Now I remember that. That's right. Uh, fiercely saying good question, Randolph. I jokingly said it's the Scoot Henderson effect. That probably is. Uh, but I didn't have the background as to why they shut it down. How will it affect the G league Lex? Will they be replaced? Yeah. There's going to be 30 teams in the G league, one for each team. And it's just going to be more clear. Part of the problem was that the old system of the G League, they were sharing teams. Like there wasn't a team for every single team, but now there is. They built it up to the point where there's 30 G League teams for each team. And uh, But before, they would have like two, uh, two NBA teams sharing the same G, uh, D, D League or CBA affiliate and, and drawing people from that. But yeah, it is what it is. It wasn't a, a success. It was a really, really bad failure this year, like really bad. And part of it is how bad they played. They played against the other G League teams, and they had a horrible record. And it was just like, what are they? What are we doing here? Yeah, let's just get rid of this. Is kind of what they were like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Seymour saying, "Who's your pick, Lex, for the March Madness? Florida State, Purdue? I didn't think Florida State made the tournament. 
I know Florida's in the tournament. Fuck them. I'm not rooting for the Gators. I'm picking Purdue. I'm fully in the Boilermakers camp with Zach, and I'm hoping and praying and wishing for them to win the national championship in March Madness. Zach Eady and the Purdue Boilermakers are my pick. I did not do a bracket, but that's who I'm rooting for. And that's who I'd like to see go very, very far. I see that Kentucky's already out. They lost in their first game uh, yesterday. Holy crap, Kentucky already out of the tournament. Crazy stuff. Sorry, Bryce. Sorry, Emmanuel. It's just that Kentucky's out. I don't think Florida State made the tournament. They didn't do well enough in the ACC tournament to get to the NCAA March Madness tournament. There's, uh, I think, UNC and a couple other, uh, uh, Duke, a couple other ACC teams that got in there instead of the Florida State Seminoles. So, yeah, it's not Florida. Florida Gators ain't Florida State. That's for sure. Damn sure. Fuck the Gators. I hate them. <laughs> uh, let's see. Smooth Sand. Uh, David, thanks, man. I just saw this. See, I don't know what y'all are saying, but it's all good. Uh, Carlos saying, Ignite caps these players' development. Nothing beats going to a Division One basketball. Hell, playing in the NBL is better for you than going to Ignite. There you go. It's just not a good option. And maybe they saw that. And it was like, well, why is this attractive to a young player to go do that isn't? In fact, the, the, the track record, and we see the path with Scoot Henderson. In some ways, it's just not worth doing. It's a waste of time. And I think that's what they realized. And Carlos got good alternatives right there. Just go to Division One basketball. Just go play in the Australian League for a, a year or something like that. That's a much better uh, option than going to Ignite. Yeah, play in France for a little while. Uh, David saying, my pleasure, my guy. Mr. saying, thank you for gifting me a membership. I'm still in Florida uh, for Winter Music Conference. Uh, I play... Uh, I played basketball in Key West. If we play basketball, I'll, I'll, sweat, I'll, I'll sweat everybody. Yeah, Jay's another really tall guy. Like, who we get a team together? We got all, like, six-foot guys, like, way up there tall guys. And we all play basketball, so we all probably have pretty good skills. So, yeah, I would love to get a Raptor Freak team together if we could make this happen some sort of way. But me moving out of the city is not going to help that because it will mean that it will be more of a commute in certain ways to meet and do this. But well, who knows? Maybe it'll form it somehow, some way in the years to come. Because I would love to have like a Raptor Freak intramural team that we just play for fun, practice, and just get out there and get exercise. And it'd be a lot of fun. Mischief, I'm glad you're still down there getting that warm weather and the sunshine and rays around Key West. What a wait, wait, let's trade lights for a little bit. How about that, Jay? <laughs> I'll come down to the music conference real quick. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I'll come down there for real. All right, Jay. All right, good to see you, my guy, in the stream with us. Uh, Fiercely saying, regular Lexathon all day, every day. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. The Zoom suggestion by Jill is not horrible, and it could be morphing at some point. But if it's over an hour that I get charged, well, <laughs> we're going to have a one-hour cutoff. That's for sure. We will definitely. I don't even know how to integrate Zoom with YouTube to get it on the stream. See, there's a lot of technical stuff that would have to happen to get it set up for it. You see now I struggle with this microphone and just getting it to work on certain days. Well, just try and add in zoom and collecting it and putting it into the stream on YouTube and all the different things. You got to put this code here to get this, to go this, to link it to zoom. And then you got to get these guys. It's just a lot. It's just a lot. And in some ways, because I do this every day and I want to wake up and be able to try and do my stream and like within 15 minutes of waking up, if you have me having to do more prep and add on this to this to this, it's just going to make my workload harder. And I have a really hard workload already with regular work and doing the channel of this channel. So I got to balance it. I got to balance it right. But who knows? I'm not going to say it's not uh, not ever going to happen. It could very much happen. It could be that YouTube changes how they are. They, they get more innovation and they allow for dual streams more easier on here. So we'll see. It could also be, you know, if I'm on Twitch at some point, it may be easier to do through Twitch than it is through YouTube. But either way, I, I'm such a non-technical person. I'm horrible at this. I can't figure out Discord. That's how bad it is. Tom Duke tried to hook me up with a Discord at uh, some point, and I said, Tom, this is stupid. I don't understand it at all. I'm not even going to try and do this. I'm that kind of guy. <laughs> I was born. I'm a, a Gen X. I was born without a cell phone. I'm not in this tech age of technology. I rode my bike and ran around with my friends out in the in the in the wilderness and went to forts, built forts in the ground and tree houses. And I was I had a childhood that did not have devices in it. So that's part of it right there. That's part of it right there that makes it. Ah, I'm just not as media savvy or a technical savvy. I really am not. Jill's got my eleven o'clock uh, 
uh, signifier. Oh, that's only four minutes ago. That's pretty good. Lex, do you need any help moving? No, I don't have very many possessions. Much like our friend benevolent Isaac Campbell, he's trying to downgrade on how much he owns. And, well, I really don't have a whole lot. And it's going to be pretty easy. In fact, I'm not trying to take a whole lot out there. I'm going to have a lot of help, actually, Jill. I'm going to have help from my family. And it could very well be I call Pizza Pizza Chris, and he helps me out. There's also the outside chance that I might call Tada and see if they help me out. I might get Tada to help me. Who knows? We'll have to see. Uh, David's saying it's not 11 yet. Get out of here. <laughs> She's four minutes early. It's all good. David's saying if you decide to wa you want to do the Zoom thing, I'll get the Raptor Freak family an annual Zoom subscription. Okay, so you'll pay it. You'll pay for me to not have to worry about the time uh, constraints. Okay, well, this, this makes it a little more attractive. That's for sure. I just, it's just sometimes I incur weird costs from doing this channel that I don't even realize I'm getting. And in some ways, I don't mind it. I don't mind it in some ways. Uh, paying you know more than I make from the channel in some ways. I lose money doing this channel, but I don't care. I have such a passion for the Raptors. I don't care. This is, I'm going to do this. But in some ways, I don't want to justify going more in the red is what I'm saying. Jill's got Grady Dick on blast. I like that. Fiercely saying, enjoy your time in Florida. He has been. I mean, he's been down there for a month already. He's been having a good time down there, I'm sure. Uh, fiercely saying, Lex belting out De, De La Soul. Just mow myself and I. Do, 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 do. That's my parody song of it. You know, Weird Al had all kinds of parody songs he couldn't do uh, 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 videos for because the artists said that they couldn't. he couldn't do it. Like uh, one is Led Zeppelin. Ze Led Zeppelin. There's a lot of Weird Al parody songs of Led Zeppelin songs, but you can't ever see them on the radio or on uh, MTV or anything like that. He does them live. If you go see him live, he will do all kinds of parody songs of like the Beatles and Led Zeppelin that you have never known that existed. Like he has a parody song for almost every song out there. And a lot of them he can't do, uh, uh, release them on album or video because the artist says, no, you can't do it. But he will do them live is what he'll do. So that's something I learned recently about Weird Al that he has a lot of parody songs that you don't know about, that if you went to his concert, you'd hear them. You're like, holy shit, I didn't know he did uh, this Beatles song. This is cool kind of thing. Yeah, that's my parody song for De La Soul's Me, Myself, and I from Th Three Feet High and Rising, the great classic album. And it's uh, it has to do with Mo, Myself, and I. Yeah, Mo, my, it's just Mo, Myself, and I. That uh, It's like, yeah, it was a song. I forget when we were singing that this season. It's pretty funny. All right, now it's 11. It's actually 11.07. Uh, thanks from uh, M Mischief, and let's go. Um, most saying, uh, UConn, uh, 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 UConn player uh, Aliyah Edwards declaring for the WNBA draft. Yeah, she's on the Canadian women's national team, and she's going to go into the draft for the WNBA. Fantastic news, local product, uh, uh, Aliyah Edwards. Go on now then, you husky. Uh, Jill saying, Lex, would you consider doing the show option again to avoid the chat delay? Just a request, Lex. I ask respectfully. Um, in some ways, I it's is this a conversation? But once again, I'm not trying to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with you, Jill. I'm not trying to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with David. I'm not trying to have one-on-one -on -one conversations with Cowboy. I'm trying to just answer y'all's questions. The, ideally, the chat shouldn't be like uh, I know that you guys are all family and you want to talk to each other. But ideally, what I will want from the chat is you guys come in with like cue cards and questions for me. Like, Jill, I want you to come in and ask me questions. I don't want you asking questions to Seymour Pape. I don't want you asking questions to Cowboy. I want you asking questions to me because the focus is on me. I'm on the screen, and this is my show. And in some ways, you having little side – it's kind of like this, Jill. Think about this. You're at a movie theater, and everybody wants to watch the movie. I'm the movie. And you're sitting in the crowd talking to your best friend in the crowd the whole time through the movie. That's kind of what it, this is to me. Now, if you guys are uh, knowledgeable uh, guests and you come on and you add and we do like a panel like Around the Horn or PTI, that would work. But in some ways, I want to get the right people involved. And it's not going to be willy-nilly anybody can come in and be on and do this. Because in some ways, I'm ask you're asking a lot of me to do this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to have a lot of trust in you to do things a certain way on the show. And in some ways, I don't know y'all in person. I haven't even seen, seen you in person in real life. So in some ways, that's that's part of the things that I have a problem with. I'm more familiar with some of the people that I've interacted with in real life. I've worked with Gerald Nako the Nacho prof professionally in different ways, writing as a writing team and other things that we've done in the past. So I have a natural 
uh, proclivity with him to work with him well, because we have a, a, a 10 years of knowing each other personally and uh, working with each other. So it's the kind of thing is like, ah, I understand what you're asking, but in some ways I don't want to give you an avenue to hijack my stream in a bigger way than just in the chat. That's part of it right there. In fact, I will tell you right now, Jill, I will not choose you to put you on Zoom if we're going to put people on here, just going by your comments. I will pick somebody who comes in here like G. G would be a perfect person to put on Zoom with me because he understands what I'm doing on this channel. And he has really in crazy, incredible comments and, and questions. There's certain people I would be more proclivity. And I don't want to pick favorites or anything. But I don't want to have to tell y'all no also. So that's part of it also. I mean, I don't mind on the phone. We can do phone calls and we'll do the phone. But putting you on Zoom for the whole entire stream with me in a box, I don't know if I'm good with that completely. I would maybe be good with like one person. I'm not trying to do a spaces kind of thing like on Twitter. That's chaos. Then some ways the form of that is like all over the place. In some ways, it's it's just not sound or good stuff. In some ways, I don't enjoy it listening to Zazu Spaces and just people talking over each other and, and going all over the place. I don't know. I'm not warm to this idea initially, but maybe over time I will be. But in some ways, we'll, we'll revisit it another time. I'm nowhere near ready to try and do this. This is definitely something that won't happen in 2024. It could happen in 2025, but I won't guarantee it. I won't. Uh, Wayne saying NBA Chef made a good point by stating that to gauge um, uh, years in the league by dog years, our crew would be teenagers playing against adults. They're young, so got to give them lots of slack. That's an interesting analogy. I mean, I could kind of see that. I could kind of see that. Um, I mean, I don't know if it's exactly like that. I mean, Kelly's presence is around. We got Bruce Brown out there. I mean, I, I can kind of see that. But, I mean, OKC is just really young, too. That's the thing. That may not apply every night. Some teams are very old with their age pyramid. And a lot of teams are very young also. So, um, let's see. Kareem's saying, uh, all right, he's got his score prediction. Let me write it in. Kareem Thomas. He's saying uh, 101 to 99 for the Raptors. See, Kareem's being a real one, too. I like this. I like that you guys are bucking – the trends and actually saying the Raptors are going to win. He's saying he's going to win a close one, two point win. I like it. It's a very Raptor thing to do to win the rest of our games. Being super optimistic is crazy sometimes. And I'll play point guard. Yeah. Yeah. Kareem's a little, he's a running back. So he's a little bit shorter guy, but I'm sure he's a great point guard on our team too. And he definitely can play. He has an athletic background and he's probably got some basketball skills. So yeah, you can be point guard. Yeah. Yeah. Cool cat's going to play too. Cool cat can play some basketball. From what I've heard, from what I've heard, Cool Cat's got some skills on the court from her days uh, playing also. Uh, Jill saying, I asked a question about Bruce Brown's method of play versus Raptors' young longevity. I felt confused, but thanks, Wayne, for answering. I want Raptors to do well. Cheers. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I'm with you on all that. Um, let's see. She asked the question about Bruce Brown's method of play versus Raptors' longevity. I don't even remember that question. Are you guys having side conversations somewhere else that I didn't see? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what – see, this, this is why it's confusing, Joe. We can't have ongoing conversations. You can't put stuff across. You, just get over how you want to run my channel and listen to my rules and follow them is what I'm saying. Jill, you don't shape this channel. And you can't request, oh, I want you to do the slow option or do this or do that. Um, I got to do what I got to do to manage this channel. And I'm not making this channel specifically just for you. And I've done a lot of troubleshooting and trying to do things correctly to make it the best that I can. And I've, dilly I've messed with this delay in different ways. It used to be like five minutes was way longer. Now it's only a minute delay. Uh, in some ways, I have the delay because some people comment too much. And that's the only reason why I have a minute delay on there. In some ways, look, I'm just trying to say no more crosstalk. Stop confusing the stream by having conversations that are too much like that. If you use proper nouns in every single comment that you write, then you can do it. But you're answering in just little short blips, and they're not good for me to read. And I don't want to skip over all of your comments. I will, though, if it's all crosstalk, because I it's not good for my stream. And what, a lot of ways, you're helping me create my content, and you're not helping me in the right way, is what I'm saying. And I'm not trying to single you out. A lot of people are guilty of what I'm saying, but you you kind of make the crusade about this and you want me to do this. And no, Lex, you shouldn't tell people they can't do that. What, what the fuck, Jill? I can. This is my channel. 
This is my channel. I can. If you don't like my rules, well, it's your choice if you want to be here or not. And that's all I'm saying. I want to work with you. I like having you here. I think you're a very diehard, passionate, enthusiastic Raptors fan. And you have the right things that you want. You want the Raptors to do well. But I want my channel to look good and sound well, too. And your comments do not help my channel. Let's just put it that way. I just need you to up your game yourself. And you can say, oh, no, Lex, you don't tell me how to be or this. Don't tell us how to be. Okay, well, you are not going to be in this channel if you're not going to listen to me, is what I'm going to say. So please, count down on the conversations. If you are going to have conversations with Wayne or anybody else, use the proper nouns and don't be lazy. Write it all out so when I read it, it makes sense. It's not just like, yes, Wayne, thank you. Or, oh, this and this. I mean, those comments, I'll just start skipping. I'll train myself to start skipping them because I just feel like it's just unnecessary stuff. And it's great. You guys can have conversations. We have conversations in the Facebook chat like this all day long if you want. But in here, I get it. And I love that you guys form friendships and bonds and get to know each other. And that's all a part of it. But you, I wish you understood what I'm trying to say about the quality of your comments. I wish you could understand what I'm saying. And it's not to be mean. And I'm, once again, I'm not per trying to single you out. It's just that you're the most egregious offender. If somebody else was doing it worse than you, I'd probably say it to them. I'd probably say it to them. Uh, Wayne's saying, uh, hi. Uh, hang on. It jumped. It jumped, jumped, jumped. Hi. Who who gifted me? I'll bet it was David. It was David. Uh, merci, my brother. I appreciate your unparalleled generosity to strangers. Love to you guys. Been really busy with projects for school. Cheers, Raptor Freaks. Good big respect, Sergeant Wayne Strainer. Appreciation for you, your hard-nosed uh, 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 outlook on life. And in some ways, man, I know you've been busier because you, I think you did say recently that you're going to be a little bit busier with things. But, yeah, all due respect and good things for you, uh, Wayne, and what you got going on. Jill's saying, David, you get a three-pointer. All right, Jill, I'll do that. I'll honor that. That's a, that's a comment that's perfectly fine. You want me to give David a three-pointer? I will. Dave is very generous and very generous to, with his offer with what, what he said about the Zoom stuff. Very, very generous. I don't know what a yearly subscription to Zoom is. Uh, Kareem saying, I'm living in Amish paradise. That's a great song. That's a really good song. Coolio got really mad about that song when it came out. It's crazy. He, saw, he agreed to it. He was like, I'm okay with you doing it. And then when it came out, he's like, what the hell? He messed up my song. He's making fun of it. It's like, this is a serious thing. Gangster's paradise. Michelle Pfeiffer. And the, the issues that I'm trying to sing about, these are for real. He's trying to fucking make fun of it. Butter churning. What the fuck is this? So he got really mad at uh, Word Out afterwards. And he kind of made an ass of himself. because He had agreed to do it. And then he looked bad, kind of like saying, oh, I didn't wish you hadn't done it. But it was actually really good for him that Weird Al did it. That's usually the case. Weird Al's parodies are good for your careers, people. Usually are, unless you're Prince. <laughs> David saying, tell me why are we so blind to see? 11-11, uh, wish. All right, there you go, Cowboy. I like that. Piercey saying, yes, Wayne. It puts in perspective how we watch and analyze the games, prevents being too hard on the players, and helps in appreciating their development. Many fans could benefit from this optic. Yeah. We just got to watch the games in different eyes. Entertained eyes and looking for development. And honestly, I'm like enjoying plays right now, whether it's a dunk, whether it's a cool pass, whether it's a connection between two of the Raptors, there's entertainment value in that kind of stuff, if not in winning. So I think that there's a lot of different ways you can watch the Raptors right now and really have fun. You don't have to necessarily be winner or, or winner or win or lose or, you know, cutthroat like that. Uh, Cream saying Jillian is such a social birdie. She can't help herself. I know that's part of it is. I know that's what it is. Part of it's a co personality conflict. Her and I's personality probably does not get along. Like, I'd be worried to meet Jill because I'd be like, I don't want to be mean to her. In some ways, I really like her a lot. I get it. We all have quirks as personalities. And in some ways, hers and I's don't mesh that well in some ways. But I love her. I think that anybody who's so passionate about the Raptors, I can totally be completely friends with, and I can get over the things that maybe we don't get uh, totally jive with our personalities. In some ways, it's true. I can tell that like her and I, if we didn't have the connection with Raptors, I don't think we'd have anything in common in a lot of ways. And uh, it is what it is. But I like Jill a lot. And yeah, she is a social butterfly. <laughs> That's the thing. She's coming in here trying to be all social and stuff. And in some ways, I, I don't mind it. It's okay. Uh, Jill saying the chat delay is something you suggested, Lex, about YouTube. It has nothing to do with Zoom. 
Yeah, no, the chat delay is something I use every morning, and I have in here right now, and it, 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 there's good reasons for it. Some people come in here and fill it up. They, if they just didn't have a delay of a minute, they would type all this shit in here and like write five or six different things, like Basketball Rewind did a couple days ago. Like other people will come in and just dominate the chat. In some ways, I don't want to do that. Once again, less is more. If you wrote a big, huge thing like Fiercy did there with Wayne, and she's very elaborate. She takes a whole long time to write out a long, long comment. You give me big, beefy comments instead of little blurbs so quickly and so, uh, like, just responses, that's not good. It's the, what, what she did is good because she's got, like, three sentences in there. I can use it. I understand what she's talking about. Less is not good in this. More is right. Less is going to hurt me. So uh, use the whole character with each comment and maybe instead of like 10 small little comments, make like three big comments is what I'm saying, Jill. I mean, I, you, you can tell me, you don't tell me how to do things, Lex. Well, I'm asking you as a request, please help me with my channel. I'm not trying to domineer you. I'm not trying to be controlling, but it is in some ways I'm trying to craft my channel. So it's good content. In some ways I'm talking about this too much today and that's getting off the rails. In some ways you shit disturber. You get me off track in what I'm supposed to be doing. You know what I should be doing right now? I should be doing a birthday today. That's right. We have a birthday today, a Raptor birthday, guys. And today it is the birthday of Marcus Camby. Marcus Camby is actually turning 50 years old today, guys. Happy birthday to number two pick uh, Marcus Camby. Marcus Camby was a great NBA player. And we're proud of you, Marcus. And happy 50th. That's a big deal. Marcus Camby turned 50 years old today. I'm so proud of you, former UConn Husky. Is he was UConn, right? No, he's UMass. UMass. He was the University of Massachusetts. Minutemen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marcus Camby, great college player. Uh, Toronto Raptor draft pick. Early Raptor in his career. Then he went to New York, traded for Charles Oakley, and uh, had a pretty good career in New York. But he really blossomed in Denver. When he got to Denver, he became a top player in the league as far as blocks and rebounds and dominance. Marcus Camby, I'm proud to say, is a Toronto Raptor draft pick. An alumni and somebody who's shown up in recent years uh, embracing his Raptor roots in his career. Finally, I was so happy to see Marcus Camby come and do interviews at Summer League last year and just kind of be around the Raptors in a way that, like connected to us. You go, Marcus. Happy 50th birthday from the Raptor Freak family to you. That's right. There you go. There you go. David saying it's Lex's channel, but I always found the chat delay made the chat more choppy especially with only 200 characters per message. I'll be here either way. I mean, feedback is great. And honestly, I want you guys to tell me how y'all feel and what ways we can improve. And the Zoom suggestion is very welcome. I think it's a good idea. It's just I'm not ready to take on that kind, kind of burden. I've made that very clear right now. I'm not ready to try and do it right now. But we'll visit it later. I mean, the phone call in thing is the next kind of step. And we'll do that a lot this summer. Trust me. Every Thursday, it'll be a call-in show on this channel where you guys can call me on the phone and talk to me uh, through the phone. And that, that'll be the first step. And maybe we'll graduate to Zoom down the road. That's the best I can do right now, guys. Uh, you know what? I I'll take the chat delay off again. I mean, I do it for trivia days. But in some ways, it's been helpful in certain ways also. So, all right. Mo's got her stat, uh, her game prediction for today. She's saying 106 to 102 for the Raptors. She's being a real one, too. I love it. You guys that are picking the Raptors over the Thunder – even if it seems a little misguided, I love it. Thank you guys for believing in our team and going for the Raptors. I love it. That's awesome. All right, Mo, you're marked down. Dap to you guys. Wayne's saying OKC and Orlando are young, but together for a while. The narrative is that players like Scotty are not the normal. Most players under years in the league are basically teenagers experience-wise. Yeah, no, I agree with this. That's just kind of like what I was saying to Kenyon uh, the other day about our team and why we may rebuild faster is because we've got a mix of knowledgeable vets like Jakob, Kelly, uh, um, Bruce Brown, uh, you know, Chris Boucher, if he's still around, with youngsters that actually have a lot of experience already, that it's not totally like we have a whole bunch of rookies and they really don't know what the fuck they're doing. You could look at our rookie, Grady, and you can see just how intelligent he is and how, like, in some ways he feels like he's ahead of the curve with the IQ and, like, the way he is smart on the court. So Scotty and Grady are ahead with smarts on the court as two are our two youngest players. Well, that says a lot right there. That says a lot right there. But this is a big topic right now. Like, how do we compare to OKC or, or Orlando? 
and our rebuild we're about to start right now. How will it look? Will it be similar to these teams? Hopefully, because they're finding success right now. They are. That's for sure. Yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. All right, let me do a recap now that I got to the end. And we are uh, half an hour from 12. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I'm happy about that. Uh, let me just make sure there aren't any things I wanted to talk about from around the league. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a, I don't need to talk about that. All right, let's go ahead and just do the wrap up. Oh, we can do the check-in with the per percentage that we're going to keep our draft pick. It's actually back at over 40%. It's 41% currently as of this morning. So 41% chance the Raptors are going to keep their, uh, their, their draft pick from the San Antonio Spurs currently this morning, 41% chance. That's pretty good. That went up from yesterday. All right, let me do the recap. The injuries for the Oklahoma City Thunder are nil, none, nada, not a single one. They're completely healthy, so their whole team's going to be showing up. Meanwhile, on our side of things, we do have injuries. I'll just run over the names real quick. Scotty, Barnes, Jakob, Pirtle, Chris, Boucher, RJ, Barrett, DJ, Carton, Emmanuel Quickly. All those guys are out already for sure tonight. So it's going to be a similar team to the team we that played Sacramento the other day. Uh, my three referees for the game tonight, the three referees are for the Raptors tonight, James Capers, Tyler Ford, and Evan Scott. James Capers favors the Thunder. T Tyler Ford and Evan Scott favor the Raptors in their history. So the, the crew's not that bad, honestly. James Capers is going to do what he's going to do, but I, I like Tyler Ford, and Evan Scott's not a bad ref either. But we'll see. Hopefully there's no funniness. I mean, y'all, come on. You don't need to help the Thunder tonight. You really, really don't. So just call it down the line. If you're going to disrespect us because we're shitty and we have uh, G League players on the uh, on the court, I get it. But otherwise, y'all should be calling it very fair. And you don't really need to help us. Just call it fair. That's all I ask. 7 p.m. tip off tonight, y'all. Just so you know, uh, Thunder and Raptors. All right, I'm going to wrap it up right now. Happy birthday, Marcus Camby. So happy to see you get your 50th birthday, my guy. That is so awesome. All right. I'm sorry if I went too uh, critical or different things I said at the end of the stream. In some ways, I don't want to go to these places, y'all. So please just work with me. The, our, this channel, our channel, in some ways is like also kind of like, uh, you know, it's a collective. And we're, we're creative together. And you're creating with me. So please work with me is what I'm asking. A lot of you guys get it. A lot of y'all get it. And, you know, not everybody's going to be perfect every day. But I, I just don't want people to be a distraction or taking away from the channel more than giving to the channel. And that's part of the problem right here is in some ways I want you to give, uh, you know, your opinions. I want to give your ideas. I want you to give me subjects to talk about. And I don't really want to hear you guys have conversations with each other. I think that's the main point. You guys want to have conversations with each other, get your information and call each other on the phone or email each other, or get on Messenger. In some ways, if you want to have that kind of social life, use the Facebook chat, Jill. Go ahead. Just chat away in there like you do in here. It's just in here, it's got to be a little bit different. That's all I'm saying, guys. That's all. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jill saying, have a nice day, peeps. My brain is fried. Bye for now. I love you, Jill. And don't don't get it twisted. In some ways, I get it. So we're going to have personality clashes in certain ways. But you're awesome. And, and in some ways, I'm so glad that you're around our channel. You really, it really is like that. In some ways, I just want to have a good time. And I know you can be a part of that. I know you can. Uh, Davis Dappen and uh, a Rapid Freak family. See you guys later. Let's enjoy the game. And Blackhawks here. Go Raps. Good to see you, Neil. Right at the end. All right. Let me do the main event marquee matchup. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Scotiabank Arena here in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Tonight, we have a great matchup of maple syrup chugging. That's right. It's a great Canadian matchup in this corner for the Toronto Raptors from Scarborough, number 41, Kelly Olenek. And in this corner for the, the Oklahoma City Thunder, we've got from uh, uh, Hamilton or from Toronto, I'm not totally sure, number um, number two, uh, Shea Gilgis Alexander of the Oklahoma City Thunder, who can chug more 100% maple syrup uh, faster, Kelly Olenek or SGA. We'll have to find out. In the game tonight, main event marquee matchup. All right, thanks. Please share, uh, subscribe, like, comment, whatever you feel like doing with my channel. Chop it up, put it somewhere else, put some purple hair on me, remix me into a cool mode video. I don't care. Do whatever you want. Creative license is there. I am like a, a song from the 70s that gets used in a rap album over and over again by Parliament P Funk. Go ahead. I don't care. Remix the hell out of me. 
you have the right. I don't care. In some ways, I'm not proprietary in that kind of those ways, you know. All right. Anyway, I love you guys. Let's go, Raptors. If we win tonight, hey, hey. But in some ways, I'm not about that. I really am not. Let's go ahead and just like keep losing because we need to. We need to. Uh, Mr. Sand, thank you, David, for the membership. I owe you and Lex a joint. All right. I'll keep I'll take you up on that, Jay, at the next meet and greet that I get to see you at, my guy, for sure. And safe travels back from Florida when you do come back from Winter Music Conference. Yeah, bass man down there, basin in the sunshine of Florida. If you've never heard Mischief play the bass, you are missing out in life, is what I'm saying. Let's go, Raptors. Let's go, Raptors.